can't speak D in these sessions. Just because of the champagne, no other reason. <laughs> You're like christened. <laughs> All right. After following the harrowing trail of the earlier team sent from Ill Matters Hope to rescue the missing children, a second group of would-be heroes discovered that the first team was, in fact, still alive, but had yet to locate the children. Rather, they had been beset upon by terrifying creatures, even resulting in the horrifying and gruesome death of one of their number. The team retrieved a magical sword from an open grave and ventured towards the Great Gate itself with six hellish torches casting light on ancient characters, massive runes, and hideous gargoyles hewn into the stone that made up the ancient archway. The carved figures represented were comprised of stern-faced humanoids, ravenous monsters, and freakish abominations in an orgy of death and torture that seemed to shift slightly under the torchlight. Two large statues flanked the edge of the arch, its sealed passage seeming to lead directly into a large mound of earth, the edges of which were obscured from vision. In the center of the archway was a massive stone door with no visible lock, keyhole, or method of entry. Rather magically sealed with two exsanguinated bodies on the steps, one of a child from the village named Gilly. The other proved to be the nameless one in disguise, poised waiting for its trap to snare, only to strike and hurry off into the dense fog cackling. The team then cleared the route, blocking the entryway to allow the gate to open fully after uttering the magical phrase, abracadabra. After which, the exhausted party members finally laid down to rest under the careful watch of their new companions. But can they really be trusted? Can our party endure the trials to come? Will the team's resolve hold up? Will odds roll in their favor? Fear the strangers in your midst. Never play games of fate. And there we are. Hey, so I guess the party begins to get up from their rest. Yep, it's up to you guys. If there's something that you didn't think of before we ended last week that you wanted to do before the end of the long rest. Well, Sudi um, has been notably uncomfortable this whole time with the humidity, making faces at it and likewise, yeah. Uh, uh, might use this time to... Uh, I guess announce my mini change. Um, I was talking with Z and uh, I was coming up with my character story last week. So it was a little bit green, uh, but I did decide with Z that it makes the most sense for my sister to be kidnapped because otherwise my character would basically refuse to go if she encounters a situation where she's guaranteed to die because she wants to take care of her sister. So um, I went for the obvious plot line because <laughs> I didn't come up with anything else. So my sister is also kidnapped. Oh, so did we all. <laughs> Yay, another <laughs> child's gone. <laughs> so much child death. The numbers keep going up. <laughs> Just when you think it's over. But wait, there's more. <laughs> oh, so we this counted one wasn't wrong. kidnapped. <laughs> it just, she just ran off. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible time to have a teen angst was moment. kidnapped. <laughs> Yeah, so um, to, to clarify, um, last session, um, Quinn um, took a few items off of uh, Sulan's corpse. Um, one notably was uh, something called the Black or the Dark Lantern, which I hope you have seen on your character sheet. I have added it. I'll take a look, thank you. Um, and for Wid, I have added um, the Bane of the Nameless to your character sheet. Okay, it's probably not going to stay there very long. Yep, feel free um, if you guys want to give items to other people. Um, that is absolutely within your prerogative. I have added um, both of those items to D&D Beyond, so you should be able to find them uh, and add them to your sheet if, you know, things change properly. said you added it to my sheet hmm. yep 
twice for me in the search results. It's interesting. Looks like it's the same anyway. I'm gonna add it to mine just because I, even if I'm not actively carrying it, I feel that I will be likely to use it in the future or be carrying it. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Um, let me let me make sure that I added it, but I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, no, it's there. It just came up twice on the list for me. When I oh, was... yeah. So you want to use version two. Uh, how would I know which is version two? In, in the top of the description, you'll see that one of them says version two and one of them does not have a version on it. You want to use version two. And, and Juliana, you can see the lantern on Quinn's sheet, right? Sorry, I'm um, still working on getting there. Okay, no problem. Putting screenshots in Discord so you can see what I'm They do look different, though. So Yeah, they... They are different. You want the one with the longer description. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I, there is a version two. I'm blind. Never mind. <laughs> <Yeah. nice> <laughs> uh, fixed. Okay. Yeah, and I and I think that if you add add that into your, uh, like if you click equip, it will just add an action for you. So when you need to roll with it, um, it will just automatically apply the bonuses and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, I will, I think, was I holding it last or? Um, I nope. think WID was holding it last. Yeah, I yeah, have I it. Back you. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll clip it if, the, if, I, if my character equips it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that totally could could absolutely change hands during the long rest. I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, before I give it up, I want to have it take a look at a map that I have in my possession. Mm -hmm. don't, okay. don't know if we want to do that just for me or in front of the group or how that's going to work. Yeah, I, I think if you, because you're, you're in possession of this map, um, so at, at any point, you could just take the, the map out and ask the sword um, if it's able to decipher the map. Um, to which its response will be something along the lines of, it's not familiar with what this map is of. Can it describe it to me in a way that I can remember? Interestingly enough, it, it describes it to you. And shortly thereafter, you forget you're you're aware that it has been described to you but you can't remember the details um and the only person uh who is not a human who's still awake with me is Edie, right you're a yes. halfling right okay yep. um so i'm going to uh hope, i don't know Edie, what you're doing but hopefully um wood's going to sit next to you and um, say out loud what she hears from the sword to see if you can remember what it's telling me because I cannot remember this map for the life of me. And I'm, I'm trying to, to be able to comprehend it. Oh, that's super clever. <laughs> I'm down for it if, uh, if the DM will allow it. Yes, okay. So here, here's what I would like. I would like both Wid and Edie to make sanity saving throws. Okay. Is that just a D20 and you have the... The sanity the modifier. modifier. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull up your sheet and see what your sanity is. That is a natural 19. Oh, we both so that, got a 19. That's great. Okay. <laughs> So as, as the sword is describing what it sees on the map and Wid is repeating it to Edie, the, 
the specific language that it uses isn't super important, but the way that it says it, the flow of the sword speech in its descriptions of the shifting patterns in um, pathways through a forest and it will go through a description and then it will it will stop and it will start over and start describing a slightly different description and then it will stop part way and do a different description they're all kind of similar but they're all distinct in their own ways it's very clear that whatever whatever the sword is seeing in this map and as as Edie is listening to Wid describe it, I assume all three of you are looking at the map where this is happening, right? Yeah, that would be this. Right, yeah. and and as you look at it, you can you can uh, see. Sudi touches the sword. Oh, we're probably not near humans. If I can help it. Oh, okay. It does not. <laughs> as you as you glance at the map, you can actually see the the images on the map are in fact shifting as you're looking at them. The path that the road takes is changing as it goes through um, the woods and the locations of certain features are changing. And as you see a feature and you're, you think to yourself, okay, I'm remembering this feature. And as, as Wit is describing it to Edie, okay, there's this, this keep and, and you try to keep the, the image of a keep on a map in your mind. And um, Edie is able to um, remember that Wid was describing the shifting patterns, the changing routes toward a keep, um, but can't remember what the map itself looked like. Okay. Um, Edie, I suspect this is gonna be important to us when we go through the gate. Um, I found this map near here. And uh, one thing that the gate says is to follow the path or the, I wasn't sure if the gate or the sword said that, but um, we were told to stay on the path. So this might, this might be important to us. And so I want someone else to be aware of this in case something happens to me. All right, well, I appreciate you trusting me. Um, if you'd like, I can hold on to it. And uh, I, I will admit I'm not known for being a navigator, but I could certainly try. Uh, I'll keep it for now. I'm not sure if there's any other side effects from this, and I am already attuned to magic. All right, well, if you know that um, all that magical stuff, uh, then it's probably best suited in your hands. Thank you very much for helping me out with this. Sure then, darling. Anything else I can help out with? Not that I can think of in the moment. All right. Well, in that case, I'll uh, keep a lookout, make sure that uh, the sleeping ones over there are uh, all right. Would you like to join or are you cool doing your uh, magic stuff? I'll probably try to see if there's any animals in the area. All right. <laughs> suit yourself and I'll um I'll make sure I'm still keeping um a line of sight on Wid but I'll I'll kind of make sure that I'm also keeping a line of sight on the um the rest of the party that's asleep okay just kind of making patrol yeah okay um Nancy what is what is Leonala doing during this period um I'm someone, or Leonola is someone who fiddles with her hands when she's waiting for things, so she'd be keeping watch, but um, likes to have like a little wood piece that she'll carve on with her dagger or something that's kind of creative, but passing the time. Okay, so. for, for eight hours. Um, <laughs> well, at that point right now when this was happening, if I was awake but not with them, I'd be kind of off in my own kind of. Okay. Um, is she is she trying to like make it look like something or is this more of a like just whittling down at a stick? Uh, she likes to do uh, animal carvings. Cool, cool. Um, just just for just for shits and grins, um, go ahead and toss me a um, 
performance, I think, roll. Dexterity. Performance? Or do you mean... Oh, I'm not sure. Where, where would arts and crafts fall on that? I think it would be, would be considered... Dexterity. I would actually think dexterity too, because okay. you're doing, okay. uh, that's described a lot when you're doing, uh, I think that's actually in the description of what dexterity is. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll allow that. But, I mean, I'm fine with either, but. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. maybe sleight of hand. And... Yeah, I'll, I'll say dexterity. And since you do this pretty often, I, I won't add a specific attribute, but I will allow you to add your proficiency modifier. It's not particularly important. I'm just curious how, how good this particular animal that she's carving is. Okay, I got a 18. <laughs> okay, that's really good. What what animal is this? Uh, let's go with bear for this one. It's a bear. All right. I feel like a muse. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's go with that. Because <laughs> it is a, because growing up on a farm, she would just kind of what's around her kind of thing so that would actually make a lot of sense <laughs> yeah the the piece of wood that that you found does have you know a bit of a char to it um since most of the wood in this area has been uh burnt um but that actually adds to i think maybe the appeal of it so the long rest ends and I think seven hours into the long rest, um, our sleeping party members begin to wake and maybe preparing meals, doing whatever it is they do at the beginning of the day. Um, those of you who stayed awake, um, I believe at this point, it's approaching dusk. It's like 8 p.m.-ish. So it's starting to get dark out. Well, Sudi has a bite to eat. During okay. the wait, she's mostly been sitting with shifty eyes. Sometimes she gets up to pace. She seems pretty antsy. Yeah, it, it it's worth noting that the the gate has been opened. Um, so this whole time, there has been this black, just immense cavern of darkness just beyond um, your awareness. Well, I'll accept the last cut. So it's not, it's not completely open yet. It hasn't been open for seven hours. Right. I'll, yeah, correct. I'll accept okay. the last cut. Right. You can, however, still see into it, and you, you definitely... Um, recognize that there is this prominent darkness and there's an opening into this passage. Which potentially something could come out, but thus far nothing has. Ellie's right. just preparing spells and doing prayer stuff. Okay, great. Uh, so I will... This... Oh, go ahead. No, please. Um, I will approach... Nancy, I don't remember your character's name, I'm sorry. Um, and I will uh, hand you the bane of the nameless and say, I think this is better suited for you. I've used it for what I think I need to use it for at this point. All right, I'm happy to take it off your hands. Try to make use of it best I can. <coughs> cool. Bless you. Bless you. So is Leonala going to attune to the bane of the nameless? Um, can I think on that shortly for a bit? Sure. The, the, mechanically, it allows um, the sword to understand languages that you speak as well as languages that it speaks. Um, actually, let's see, that's actually, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and attune. And all okay. of this point. Cool. So dusk falls, the light begins to fade. The oppressive heat 
of the area is ever present, albeit the stench is a bit lessened, the scent of rot and decay is still ever present. The mist hangs around the entire day. Limiting was, visibility to about 30, 30 to 40 feet. Was Wood able to determine the difference in time in any sort of way that can be related to the group between the inside and the outside of the gate? Like, could I have an estimate of how long maybe the kids have been in there comparatively? Yeah. Um, let me get an intelligence arcana roll from you. Yeah, and I'm not sure if um, the beast spell that I had before helped with that at all. Um, um, that's enabling you to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a nine. That is a right. no in German. <laughs> <laughs> Convenient, because that's exactly my answer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's very hard. The, the mental messages that, or the mental signals that you're getting back um, from your messenger, they're, it's like the flow of time is not, it's not a constant on the other side of the gate, but rather it, it's fluctuating. Okay. So you're, you're not, unable to determine um, even even a rough estimate of what the dilation is, you're just aware that it is there. Confirms what the sword told you. Could I clarify uh, how long I'd likely been awake by now? So it's, well, I mean, I may not be able to know that. So if you maybe want to tell how tired I am, if that would <laughs> make more sense. Um, and yeah. then also, uh, after that, I was going to ask if, uh, if we, us humans were to have been told anything about this map reading or if we're completely in the dark at this point of that as well, but, uh, first for Z about time. Yeah. So you've been awake at this point, I'm going to say 16 hours. Okay. So not beyond normal, reasonable time frame. As far as the map, I will leave that to you guys. Let's say Sudi caught a glimpse of it, but didn't care. She just knows they have a piece of paper over there. If I was nearby, I would have been a little nosy without being pushy. <laughs> so uh, if, if I saw your map, I kind of would have looked over and been like, hey, what do you, uh, what do you got over there? Kind of. Is this during when we were reading it or? Uh, if I saw you guys reading it, like I, I'm someone who kind of keeps track of what other people are doing. I'm, I'm not necessarily hovering, but if somebody starts to go off and I'm in this group, then I'll ask what's up. So if you guys were huddling over there, I probably would have gone over there and been like, what are you guys working on over here kind of thing. Um, so. Yeah, I wouldn't have hit it. It's just uh, that that would purposefully sought another small person <laughs> out uh of you know somewhat familiarity um yeah and and she would explain that this map is very difficult to read as you can see or rather not see or remember so i'm trying to find a way that that we can maybe use this cool good thinking <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'll just kind of know some of what was said if that makes sense yeah and uh and now that you have the sword the sword has seen this map as well so Perhaps that could help if we're in a pinch. Do you ask uh, the sword about the map? Myself? Um, yeah. No, I probably would have just blindly trusted whatever was told to me. Okay. <laughs> By the <Right>. witch. Not, <laughs> yeah. If the person was not uh, obviously suspicious, I'm not the character. Uh, she's not like a overly suspicious person it, it's more like if somebody looks suspicious or acts suspicious i might pick up on it but not if it was mm -hmm. 
Don't be suspicious now. Don't okay. be suspicious. So um, I, I gave you the personality of the sword. So in, in terms of like just everyday conversation. Is it um, a good that, time for me to go eat? Sure. Okay. In terms of like everyday conversation of what Leonala may have with the sword, um, you you have its personality, so I will allow you kind of free reign in terms of, you know, what Leonala may talk to the sword about and what it might respond. Um, if there's something that I think might be inappropriate, I, I might connect or correct that. Um, but if it's something critical to the game, then I will provide that reply but if leonalo is like hey i'm gonna like idle chit chat with the sword i'm perfectly down with that i guess um kind of like when you say i have the personality of the sword what do you I'm not in in the sword's description there's a, a block that says personality okay okay so like yeah. Have yeah and it describes the sword's personality so the type of things that the sword might say to you um would would kind of be guidelined by that block as opposed to me just role playing the sword all the time okay yeah but you're so good at it i was gonna say but we like that do the voice <laughs> forever <laughs> always I, I, okay uh so? probably shouldn't read this out loud you can if you want uh, and uh, it only speaks to the wielders, so uh, anyone has anyone not held the sword yet? Only a couple of, of us have, right? Okay. So <laughs> most people know, haven't. Why it's creepy? Uh, yeah, you were asking who has not held it, right? Because that was the party. Didn't. <laughs> I think Sudi, myself, and you, Nancy, are the only ones who've held it. I have a question for you, uh, Z, as well. Um, are there any lingering effects if I'm not, I'm attuned to the sword, but if I'm not currently wielding the sword and it's unequipped, um, is this affecting me in any way? Uh, if you are not holding the sword in your hand, it, it won't talk to you. Um, you do, however, still gain advantage on your sanity saving throws because it is attuned to you. Okay, so it's not like a, a lingering effect. It's just literally talking to me. Yeah, it only talks to you while you're holding it in your hand. Um, it will only distract you with conversation during battle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or like encouragement. <laughs> Lee, is this sealing the nameless one? No. <laughs> it would be such a terrible sword. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are we fighting this? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm suspicious of the sword and what it tells me, uh, as I was in the beginning. But mm -hmm. the, the difference between last time is that I'm motivated to fighting my sister and I don't give a shit. <laughs> so I'm just following because that seems like the, the best thing to do right now. Um, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Cool. So everybody's awake. I hope you've got your spells memorized. You've had a hearty breakfast. Um, if I could ask a quick question too. Um, are we keeping any formal track of inventory for daily living purposes like rations or the like? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are keeping track of rations. Okay. I'll just keep track of what I use for now and I'll maybe have some follow-up questions after today. Yep. Sister, do you still have those cashews? Oh, uh, yes. And she she digs through her pack and she um, offers to anybody who would like them um, some cashews and I believe it was dates. Do those grow around here? Would I have ever had these before? They do. Okay. Yeah, these, these particular uh, fruits and nuts were foraged by, by the villagers of Ilmater's Hope. I will accept some graciously if they're offered to me. 
Yeah. So essentially there, there is one ration, one day's rations worth of dates and cashews for the entire group. So once you've used them, they're gone. Um, really quick, did only the sleeping party get the long rest or? That's um, correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, gonna, I'm sure we got a short rest, but I don't know if that helped much. <laughs> you did get a short rest if you would like one. Yes. I'll, I'll take that one. Um, I wanted also to know um, if it was cool to try to take a look around and see if there was anything to um, anything to like forage or hunt down around here to try to in scrounge up some food. Yeah, in the immediate vicinity of where you guys are. Now, if if you want to go like out away from the immediate vicinity of the group. Um, you should definitely tell me that, but in, in the immediate vicinity, there is nothing. And, and that count we can't forage on, I'm sorry, go ahead. We can't forage on unhallowed ground. That's all I was going to say, but we're not on unhallowed ground currently, right? You are not. However, the area is still um, pretty barren. Right. Yeah, only the, only the town itself was unhallowed ground, um, but this still has been hit by a very nasty fire. Don't morels grow right where big forest fires have um, that is more... probably that is probably true in the real world. How about pine nuts? Can I get pine nuts? <laughs> Toasted. <laughs> Toasted. Wasn't Wid? Didn't you mention that she was like doing an animal search or? Yeah, but if she has to leave the area, I'm not sure that she would. Yeah. Oh. In 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 your previous visit here and in this visit thus far you have actually not heard any sounds of animals no chirping of birds no skittering of small rodents it's eerily quiet except for the buzzing do i get any sort of feel one way or the other if i'm close to the gate from what's inside of it like can i do i don't know insight or how I, how I feel feeling. about it, I guess. How, well, that, I, I suppose that's just up to you to decide how Wid feels about it. There's nothing, like, that is defining the way that you feel. So, yeah. Okay. You're not getting any evil vibes from it, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I mean, more like corrupted or, or something like that. Um, okay. Yeah. I could do a divine sense. Um, I just got those back. Do you think that'd be useful? I don't know if we have the same divine sense. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wouldn't say this probably. It was just more of a, am I worried about going in? Mm -hmm. I, I think, correct me if I'm overstepping. I think Wid is worried about going in. There, there is the writing on the door that essentially is a warning for people not to go in, right? It, the medieval version of trespassers will be shot kind of thing, right? So yeah, I, I think it is a perfectly valid um, worry about going in. Uh, basically, I changed one of my spells because as a druid, I know all my spells. So it's just like what I prepare and I added purify food and drink because I'm more worried about purification in there. So. Yeah. We have such a smart druid. <laughs> she also has good berry. <laughs> well, that's what I switched out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay. Uh, in a previous yeah. game, I would only make a good berry in bear form. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and nobody wanted them. Amazing. All right. So what are you guys doing? 
Uh, I am I am helping sister distribute cashews and fruit. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. And you, do you she's gonna pause by Sudi. Do you know nuts? Do you deal with the fruit? Nuts? Are you okay? You seem very <laughs> nutty. <laughs> what you were going for? Sudi so so takes it the out loud. Nuts. <laughs> do the nuts still have the shells on them? Uh up to you. Yes. I'll let you guys, I'll let you okay. guys decide. Well, she p- starts to eat the fruit in small bites, and then she tries to bite the nut. Wait, it's shelled? Shell it? Shell it? Do cashews have shells? They're legumes, right? That's what I was thinking. Googling it. <laughs> oh, we're Googling. <laughs> we're walking. We're walking. So uh, these, you have to kind of, uh, there's a pit in the middle, so you want to make sure that you don't just bite through it, or it might hurt your teeth. And these... You may or may not have to shell. TBD. It's like, I I don't think they... In our magical cashew world. (laughs) I don't think cashews have shells, so she she eats them, but she (laughs) eats the cashews in two bites each. That's good. That's Enjoy. Okay. So, I gotta admit, uh, the socks are fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I agree. That is wonderful. We definitely needed something to agree on again. Uh, yeah. Y'all, so um, kids probably inside. We're definitely outside. Uh, we should probably bury Gimli. Gilly. Goober. <laughs> Gimli. Gower, Boober Gooper, <laughs> forget his name. <laughs> I had just wrote it down during the monologue, but I done forgot. Yeah, so, thank you. Like studio, but weird. Okay. Like the suit, Gilly. Okay. Uh, probably shouldn't just leave him there because that's, I mean, y'all had eight hours, nothing personal. Um, You saw how we did it with the other one. <laughs> we probably should have asked them to do it while we slept, before we slept. Why would we have to ask them? They're from the town. Too. They're here for the same. Wait, I'm sorry. You know what? We're all really stressed out. Sorry. Go sorry, ahead. are you referring to the branch or something else? I missed the context. The, the dead boy. boy. The dead boy. The boy oh. who's dead. Oh. That we left laying there all night okay okay all day all day it wasn't day. even night it's coming on night yeah how let's uh that? let's have a have a snack and then bury a dead child um i you know i'm just glad everyone's here for helping um speaking of everyone then you all are going to have to sleep soon, probably. Does anyone are have you... a shovel with them? I think so. Oh, there's a shovel over. It's about ten minutes that About way. a ten minute walk. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be good if we stayed together as a group. I I admit my mind has been on my sister, so fair point. Is the ground okay. soft? The ground is fairly soft. Yes. And Studi begins to dig with her hands. Or we could. There a rock. <laughs> Is there a rock? <laughs> yeah, there's there's rocks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Flattish rocks. All right, you guys are gonna dig dig a small grave, shallow grave, I'm assuming. I just help automatically this time <laughs> after the last conversation. Yeah. All right. Um I'll just say th- this will probably take about an hour. It's a small grave, though. Yeah, about There's an hour. Many of us, many of us. We're not even like three feet is fine. The the whole process. <laughs> Waking up and everything, right? Yeah. The process yeah. of the whole. Yeah. Do <laughs> 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 you that there are more important the... things to do? But she goes along with it. So while we're digging, uh, you know, Madly is obviously grumpy, but so. You guys came. You're not from the village. 
gesturing to Sudi. You're not from the village, gesturing to Wid. I've seen you two around on occasion. Um, Edie and Mavli have probably actually worked together some, because that's why I'm there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think Edie and Mavli and um, Ellie and Sister Cavernsfall all know each other fairly well. So, I mean, we all have the same point and the same purpose. We all, uh, and you guys walking through, I assume followed our trail and saw a little bit of what we've dealt with already. I don't expect it to be any better. <sighs> Why is the ground so hard going inside? <laughs> In fact, it should, it will probably be worse. This ground is not hard. Where are you even from? <laughs> I came upon Vulture Pass. To the south of there is my homeland. Do I know what that means? Do I um, know how, means? how well traveled is Mavli? Fairly. I think you have probably heard of it. Vulture Pass oh. is an area in between where Sudi's from and the town. Gotcha. It's, okay. it's a it's a mountainous region to the south of the Bright Vale. Yeah, you probably would not think this is particularly hard. But that's okay. Progress, not perfection. Digging. Did you guys... Um, how, are, how are things back in town? I mean, we were worried for you they sent a few, uh, sent a few of us out to look for y'all and make sure y'all are okay and find the kids uh, how are we supposed to send the word back or do you think that it's going to be two days and then they send out another group i have been doing that actually oh in what way we had no word back at town i have a system with the barkeep that I use to let him know that we are safe. The sock lady is amazing. Got it. And, and I, I think that we should send a message back. Normally my messages do not have any words in them, but if there is someone who is familiar with him and he would recognize their voice, I would like them to send a message. How can a voice be recognized through all of these trees and the distance? Edie um, would have probably been in the tavern on occasion, but not super familiar with there, and definitely not familiar with a uh, magical ability to communicate. Um, Ellie's family sells product to the the um, tavern or bar or have you. So I think it's also. It's also rumor around the town that uh, the the innkeep, Ias, um, may or may not be having an affair with the mayor. Right. I remember you saying. I figured the, our little, little gnomish buddy, well, oh, yes, the gnomish buddy would probably have done favors for said barkeep on occasion. Would he have, uh, would they have told the town, though? I just, I'm surprised that I heard nothing of this when we sent a second party. There's been no word that I've heard from anyone. Anyone? Did, would you explain to us how your system works? It is a trust between he and I, and I am where he gets his mead. So you may recognize the taste. However, as you might know, I am not welcome in town. And those associated with me may also not be welcome in town. So I send a particular bird, and when he sees that bird, he knows that the meat is ready to be picked up. This bird can also carry a message. I don't normally send a message. He might not even know my voice. But I think it's important that we let him know where we are going. Time is different, and they should not send another group. A trained bird, that is clever. How long do you think it'll take to, to, for the bird to get from here to the village? Z? 
I, I think that Wid is probably familiar with the speed that birds fly. So I think you could estimate as the crow flies, as they say, it'd probably take um, probably less than a day for the, the bird to travel the two and a half day land journey. Okay. Uh, yeah, then. So who do we think is the most trusted? Um, of the town whose voice would be recognized by the tiefling. Oh, definitely the mayor. Yeah. Mayor Delvin Brighthope. No, I mean of, of our, the party. Of our group. Oh, oh. <laughs> um Madeline was saying Quinn, but I think I'm also a candidate. Maybe the sister. Sister Catherine's fall. Do you, do you have a working? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so Sister Cavernsfall looks kind of offended and says, I do not frequent such establishments. There are plenty of other reasons besides patronage to visit establishments such as that. Regardless, I do not. <laughs> All right. Defensive. <laughs> we'll smelt a delta kind of thing. I mean, geez. <laughs> may I be the one to send the message? Is that all right? It is fine with me. Whoever feels that they are best to send the message to the town. Do you have like a a limit on how long it can be? Like, do we have to? Uh, let me let me think about this. <laughs> Um, no, it's pretty Ju succinct. <laughs> Juliana, does <laughs> does Quinn know about um, Ias's deal with Wid? Um, I how, well, it sounds like they would have kept that pretty private. Yes, is this yeah. something? But seeing that as you seeing as you worked for him and did like errands for him, maybe mm -hmm. maybe Quinn would know. That's up to you. He suddenly appears with meat occasionally. <laughs> yeah, the, the messenger can go 50 miles within 24 hours. Um, they can replicate the I... sound of my voice or a voice, um, but it doesn't say how long the message can be. Well, then Quinn can speak as long as she wants. <laughs> Singing the song. Oh no, I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot for Quinn. Uh, I have been sending a message at the end of every day. Well, I've been sending my messenger at the end of every day to let them know that, that we are safe, the party is intact. I doubt that I will be able to continue to send messages every day. So he needs to know that. He needs to know the time is different, um, that the time is different and also for the children and that that is a blessing. But most importantly, do not send more people to their potential doom. Okay. I'd be happy to vol uh, volunteer. I, I feel like I'm, I don't know who would be best for such a such a job. I'm just a villager. Seems like if Quinn works with him, that it might be familiar. Sure. What do I need to do? Do I do I have to talk to your bird? Yes, I'll get it set up, and I'll be like, let him know about our situation. What does it look like when when Wid cast this spell and having Quinn speak into the casting of the spell? Well, I ha it has to be a, a tiny beast within range, so I'm going to have to find a bird around here. Yeah, what's the range of the spell? Uh, 30 feet, so I might have to walk around a bit. Yeah, I, I think... While we get the shovel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you might catch the occasional bat flitting through. So yeah, I'll, I'll just go with you. You were able to locate a bat. 
OK, and it's very important that the voice is trusted if it's not a usual messenger. This poor barkeep is going to be like, bah! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I essentially I, I have the, the bat kind of cradled in my hands with its wings folded um, and I whisper to it very quietly. No one can hear it. And then I'll hold it up in front of uh, Quinn's face and nod for her to say her message. You get to talk to a sky puppy. Ooh. Ooh, a the sky puppy of the night. Is, I put in chat what you said we were supposed to say. Is that all that you wanted? He looks a little confused. You're Sorry, you let me birds. take a second to- You train night birds? Oh, not, not that chat, different chat. Different chat, Zoom chat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Hello, Bad. It's, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for doing this for us. So, my friend, um, this ain't a song for the broken hearted. We're going to get the kids in the gate. But don't send any more people. I don't think we can send word again. Um, time is different, moves differently here. Was there anything else? I will let it's the back know. now or never. You can see Thank you, This message is from Quinn. Do not reply. <laughs> All right. And the bat flits off into the night. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy, that was wonderful, Quinn. <laughs> Nona's stone face, but she's clapping. Good job, Quinn. You see that? Thank you got a good job from Nona Ellie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> so we obviously have a little bit of a um a shift in sleep schedule that we probably ought to deal with. We still have 13 missing kids. And a giant weird gate. But we are full and quasi half of us are rested and half of us are sleepy. So suggestions? I'm good for many more hours. That doesn't surprise me. Do we have any tonight, earlier, I'll be all right. Okay. Here, say we at least make some ground and perhaps we can rest in a couple hours. Make some ground. Yes. Like make some progress. Like uh oh, yes, make progress. I just I think we should keep going. Let, let's it concerns me how long things have taken just with you all already missing for several days. So um I'm just afraid for my sister, I must say. We're all afraid for the children, of course. Well, um, is there room to swing an axe just between the two door, the two open doors? Yeah, there was room for Edie to crawl through. So I have a quarter staff if you want me to, to poke in it. Can I just use my axe to just? I'm not I don't have to be inside the gate to hit it, right? Yeah. You can reach through it. I think so. All right, it is time. Chopping it with your hand axe? Yep. Okay. You guys, you'll get used to that eventually. She's like that when she's ready. She just goes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm going to follow. Did you need, right. did you need to do something else, Matthew? No, I go ahead. I okay. got your back. Right back. <laughs> Thank you. Back here. I got your back too. No, I'd rather you have the front because you do that swingy, hammery thing. God, you guys should have seen it. She cut somebody in freaking half with a war hammer. It wasn't even sharp. It was just freaky. Anyway, let's go. Is that why the one with horns was in half? No, different. Very different. <sighs> Very 
different. Awesome. No one is pretending she's not hearing. All right. So do I need to roll to attack or? You do not. You do not. Okay. So Nona pulls out her, I, this is a hand axe, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So Nona takes out her hand axe and chops down the last bit of the uh, root that was barely hanging on after uh, Wid kind of tearing it apart with her acid claws. Very sharp, dangerous fingernails. Um, and as you cut that last bit of the of the root, the massive doors slowly grind their way open. And inside you see about a 30 foot wide passageway and about 20 feet high of just darkness. Judy eagerly moves forward. Yeah, I would just go straight forward too. Are we closing um, the door behind us as well? So this bad shit can't get out? What bad shit? I, that, bad yeah, shit I, in the gate? Aimless that's sealed in here, I believe. Well, um, weren't we supposed to try and lure the silent one inside? We also spoke of finding animals to sacrifice to reseal it. You would require sacrifice in order to seal the gates, so I have concerns about doing so when we haven't even found or verified the children exist in here. Can we not just say I broke it ever again? Um, I'm gonna like, who, who's the one who said it before? Was it Wid? Who said the word? Who said? Yeah, who I said, believe it was Mavly. I didn't, did not was say it. Mavly? Okay, so I'll, I'll be like, can we just say Abracadabra again? Is there everybody inside? I, I don't know. Are you guys all inside? I am. I'm, I'm lined, inside. lined up, but I don't know if I'm in there yet. I'm already right. in there. Well, it's, it's a very wide doorway, so you don't have to go in like a single file line. Yeah. So, so why don't you describe to me how you guys are going in? I'll be first. Can we go in like two by two or three by three or something? It was probably kind of a, a large horde. Like Nona walks up, chops at the thing, pushes her way in, and the rest of us glom inside. <laughs> you know, like girls going to the bathroom. Great. Yeah, if I, I love it. <laughs> If I wasn't first, I would just go for I've it. I've never experienced that. You walk in a group, cool. you don't go alone. Um, I've always gone just, alone. Just past the, the threshold inside the gate, um, Leonala, the blade begins to shake violently at your hip, um, but it doesn't seem to be able to do anything without you touching it. It, it is very clear that the blade wants attention. Um, I actually, uh, I have it equipped and I would typically be wielding a weapon, especially going into a new area or if we're just flying ahead. Okay, if great. I, if I can do so while walking at least. Great. Um, I would like you to make a charisma saving throw, please. Okay. It's good I don't have it anymore. I'm negative one charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> Sixteen. Okay. As as feelings of overwhelming hatred and duty begin to overcome Leonala's mind, you are forced to immediately attack the person closest to you. Oh shit! Who is Sister Cavern's fall? <laughs> Oh. Uh, so I'm overcome with hatred and duty and it doesn't uh, force me to say anything that's just a feeling of hatred and duty correct? You you get that that feeling it just overcomes you you have to do this you are so angry about what what this gate is holding in that you just have to shed blood in order to reseal the gate. 
Okay. And so you are attacking um, the next person closest to you, who is Sister Cavern's Fall. Um, this is, however, um, an automatic critical hit. Oh, shit. So I would like you to roll for me uh, 2d10s, so percentile dice. Isn't she a healer? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> oh, you mean sister? Yeah. One of many. Uh, okay. A three. A three? Uh, a six and then a three. So 63. 63. Okay. There's also a D100 like tool dice in the bottom right that you can do for a percentile. Oh, wait. Sorry. I, I literally rolled two separate d10s today. no that that's fine because someone fine. will do it that way too as long as we know which one was first but um but yeah but they also have a, a d100 um as well oh, oh, okay yes then, okay gotcha caught it 63 <laughs> okay so you swing the sword at sister cavern's fall so viciously that your your damage roll will result in the maximum amount of damage as part of this attack and you get an additional die of the same kind to add to the damage dealt. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, so that would just be another d10? Yep, 1d10, and you're going to add that to the maximum damage that you can deal. OK, <laughs> that sucks. Uh, I rolled an 8, and maximum damage for the long sword is 1d plus 4, so max damage is 12, plus the 8 would be 20, 20 total. 20 points of damage. So what, what the rest of you see is as you walk past the threshold, Leonala, the expression on her face suddenly changes, um, and you can see clear hatred in her eyes as she pulls the sword in her hand already and just thrusts it into sister caverns falls chest who then gasps and clutches at the sword in her chest as the blood flowing down her body is then sucked into the stones at the base of the door and it causes almost immediately the doors behind you to grind shut closing the doors behind you as sister caverns fall falls to her knees gasping Sister Caverns fall. I run over and I I'm I'm going to shove I'm going to shove um uh Lee off and back. He says you have attacked their sister. They will make you pay for this. Edie's going to run and try to to tackle uh Lee and bring her down and just say, "Oh, you motherfucker, I will knock your teeth." So far down you'll throw, you'll spit them out single file. I've got a question. Uh, after I thrust the sword, does the feeling completely dissipate in me or what happens immediately after? Um, I'm, I'm imagining that when you stab her, the sword is still in her. So when they like grab you, they knock you away from the sword. And so the feeling would immediately go away. Okay, I, my, Leah, er, not Leah, um, sorry, I'm laughing because my character is just really not making a great first impression here, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Lee would just, like, have a face of utter shock, and I would, as a character, just be, like, I would not know what to do. I would be emotionally shutting down right now and, like, look horrified. My face would go from hatred to looking horrified, and I would just, like, let you guys do whatever if you were shoving me or pushing me, I wouldn't be, you know. Please make a sanity saving throw. <laughs> you just tried to murder one of your companions. <laughs> Achievement um, unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> sanity, so that would, how would, I, how would I roll sanity since it's not in the character sheet? It's a d20. And I believe your sanity modifier is a minus one. Uh, yes. So. Uh, so <laughs> I can roll a six minus one. I got five. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oops. 
That makes sense, though. That that tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as as you're knocked to the ground, the the realization of what you just did washes upon you, and it paralyzes you, and you're essentially effectively catatonic for the moment. That sounds about right. (laughs) And you suffer twenty stress damage. Uh, Wood will kneel kneel down next to the sister. Um, she will not touch the sword, but she will touch the area around it and try to help with medicine to stabilize her. I don't know if she's yeah. dead. dead you, but... You're leaving the sword in? Yes. Okay. So you can see um, the. it seems like Sister Cavern's Fall Blood is being actively drawn out of her. And she is she appears to be in excruciating pain and continuing to take damage and take damage okay Sudi leans down and asks Edie what is your penalty for kin slaying well my penalty is my fucking fist in your fucking face <laughs> that is the only penalty that's my penalty you got a problem with that no only a strange custom Get that shit out of her already. Whatever weird shit that sword is. Is that is 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 the sword like clearly the cause of this or no? no the sword is in her. It is creating it has created an open wound. The sword is still in her. Um, but it seems like the door itself is drawing the blood towards it. Right, right. I was just saying, do I know that the sword is the problem and I shouldn't touch the sword? No, you have no idea. Okay. Um, do I have... I don't have proficiency in medicine, so I wouldn't necessarily know what to do. Um, I will... I, I... Just shocked, right? She's stuttering. I don't... I know you're not supposed to pull... I know you're not to, because that'll just increase the blood flow. Um, I will, and she'll like, she'll put her hand on Sister Cavern's fall and give her um, a couple points of lay on hands. How many points? Two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and can I roll medicine to try to stabilize her? Uh, do you have a, do you have a medical kit? Medicine kit? She's not unconscious. I mean, I have the hermit druid equivalent (laughs) okay sure uh eight for medicine so not great yeah it seems like something magical is actively drawing the blood out of her it's not being drawn into the sword it just seems like the sword is there right we need to close the wound or else she's going to die um, I turn to Wid. Is there a way to safely take the sword out without for causing further damage to her? These types of wounds are best treated when the, the sword is in until we have proper supplies. How can I help? Uh, question, are we going to get proper supplies from anywhere or should we just get the sword out and do the best we can? Because I don't see like a general store. Pulling the sword out will make her die faster. I, I do only, not. Sorry, I only halfway saw that message. Um, your your catatonia will last for about a minute. Okay. Whenever I break out of that, I just start like wailing and like the type of crying where like you're not actually crying, you're just kind of screaming out and in, in like if someone just saw someone die in front of them, type of wailing, you know. Mm-hmm. Also, you just <laughs> um, those of you, those of you watching, specifically the ones of you directly caring to Sister Cavern's fall, you can see that her condition is getting actively worse. Um, she is suffering more damage. She is getting paler and paler as she is being exsanguinated. The, right. Her blood is literally being drawn out of her body. Uh, can she speak? Is she cognizant at all? She is trying. 
She's, she's gasping for breath. Seems like the sword pierced one of her lungs. Um, I will I will lean in close and ask if she has made her peace. I th- I think she would look up with look up at you with tears in her eyes and say, I'm not ready yet, but if it has to be someone, I'm glad it was me. Do we see the do we actively like see the blood pooling towards the to the door? Yes. Do I hear her say that? Yes. Okay. Then he attacks the door. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. How how does how does she attack the door? With her dagger. Okay. Great. So I don't know if you've ever hit a dagger on stone. It's a bone dagger. Oh, even better. So if you've ever uh, <laughs> held held a piece of bone in your hand and smashed it against stone, um, it's not a pretty sight. Um, I imagine bits of your dagger probably chip off. If you continue to hit the door with your dagger, it will probably break. She just hits it once to see if that does anything to stop it from sucking up blood. Yeah, it it probably chips off the very tip of your dagger and you realize, oh shit, this is actually stone. Hopefully you're, what is it called? The little, what's that round part? The pommel? The pommel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully that's strong because if it isn't, then you're going to get a dagger through your own hand doing something like that. (laughs) Um, Edie's just going to shout out, get her away from that door. It's it's literally sucking her blood out. Just get her away from it. But if she moves, she will bleed more. I'm gonna cast will cure that wounds. Make her bleed more. Get her away from it. Damn it. Um, okay. I'll I'll put my hand on uh, Nona's arm and say, I don't think that will help. I think you need to save that for later. Um, remember this door sealed something inside that protected the rest of the world outside. There are people I, that we I care about outside as well. Outside. We're just gonna have to open it again. I already picked up that twang. <laughs> We're just going to have to open it up, up again anyway on our way back. Pretty sure we just sealed the silent one outside. If we get her for, far enough away from the door, don't you think? This is magical in nature. I cannot stop this. Judy grabs one of the sister's arms and looks up to... I don't give up on my friends. Nona to grab the other one. I'm sorry. Um, She's going to cast Cure Wounds. Okay. Roll. Uh, That's a D8. Uh, That's not... Nope. (laughs) Sorry. I rolled a D... I rolled a D10 instead. All right. There we go. Okay. So that is a um, seven plus two. Um, so that is nine points of healing. Um, and she's going to pick her up and carry her as far away as she can. Okay. With um, Sudi. Sudi. All right. Um, as you as you pick her up, you can see that there the trail of her blood is it's flowing like against gravity almost. It's flowing in a path. Sudi tries to right? cut the path. It's not it's not like a continuous. So like you're gonna stand in the, no, she's in just, the way of the path. She's being tagged with her tag and that's still out. It's like yeah. it's like ant pheromones where if you wipe it away, it won't know where to go. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um yeah, so the trail of blood continues to flow from the wound which the sword is still in, um, still actively an open wound. As you carry her away and she suffers some more damage. How far are you taking her away? Um, I'm assuming that other people are coming with me. Um, I, I, 
I'm I'm going to carry her until she dies. I am curious as to what Quinn is doing. She's just licking the blood on her. <laughs> 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 yeah, she <laughs> she she wants to help, but that that smell of blood and the screaming, she's just going insane. Um but she does want to um pull madly aside for a second and say hey madly i have i have this um this lantern we got from sulan uh i don't i don't think i can um bear the responsibility of holding on to this can you take it for me now sure <laughs> yes here for you Okay. All right. I will take the lantern. <laughs> um, a few seconds later, as you are dragging Sister Cavern's fall away from the door, um, you get about eight paces in, and I'm, you hear, I'm speaking to her as as I'm walking. She's very, very faded. She's only hanging on just now because of your cure wound spell. Um, but so you saw like a tiny bit of color come back with the magic, but it's quickly draining again. Yeah. Um, and about eight paces in, um, a muted pop meets Wid's ears as she has the highest passive perception, followed by a quick mechanical grinding. You hear the doors finally shut, closed entirely. In the same instant, a thin bladed wire rushes forward towards the team from somewhere deeper within the hallway, forcing you to make dexterity saves to avoid being sliced open. Uh, do I have time to say get down or dodge or something? Nope. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be for all of you. I got a six. Okay. I guess her arms are still full of half of her companion. Yep. This will be for all of you that are inside. Sorry, you said a wire was coming through quickly? Yep, a thin wire. How high is it? It's one of those sharp death it's, wires. So um, is the sister dead? For, Not yet. For Leonala, it's probably like just below knee high. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the ground wailing, so that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flatten. Just flatten. <laughs> Man, um, oh, I, I hate doing this myself. So I rolled a 19, but I also am just out of being catatonic, so I feel like I would be at disadvantage. Dude. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you or you flailed in the right direction. I also rolled at disadvantage because I'm carrying a paladin. A palladian. Um, you don't need to roll at disadvantage because you're carrying the paladin. No? Oh. All right. Well, Z's being nice. That means, thanks, you know, for now, go awry. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know that this is not the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> so then. Um, All right, so Mavly, what'd you get? Non natural 20. Oh, good. Chrissy, what'd you get? 17. Okay. 18 on the die. Wouldn't that be unnatural 20? Uh, Kess, what'd you get? Uh, none. <laughs> Nine. Oh, no, I got nat 20. Oh, uh, great. Which I think is appropriate with the passive perception. Yeah, and Juliana? 13. 13. That is exactly what you needed. Uh, Abby. Edie? Sorry? I think he means me. Yes. Oh. What, what was it? Oh, six. Six. Okay, great. Three plus three. And Maya? <laughs> Five. Oh, ouch. But you're so and small. and Nancy, what was your what was your disadvantage? 
uh, I've got a question for you of how you want me to do it. Um, first, I rolled a save, saving throw without advantage or disadvantage. Then I figured out how to roll with disadvantage through D&D Beyond. Uh, roll again. So do you want me to count the first roll of my second, or do you want me to just do the second one? Um, what was the first roll of your second? Uh, my first roll was... Uh, I got 19 total, so that was plus the two. So that would have been 17 without any modifiers. And then my second roll, I rolled a four and a seven without modifiers. So that so, means- So your first roll was a 19 and a 17? Um, I'm, yeah. sorry, I'm forgetting how, how um, rolling with advantage or disadvantage is. Um, if you're not rolling with either, you just roll once. And then if you roll with advantage or disadvantage, you're rolling twice and then you take average of the two? Disadvantage, you take the lowest of the two. Advantage, you take the highest of the two. Okay, then uh, then I'm just gonna maybe okay, I think I rolled a four. My so you rolled okay. a, like a 17 and a four? Um, one second, I'll be out of it. Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I haven't done the rolls with the Indie Beyond before this way. Um, the sec, sorry. So I, through DD Beyond, I first rolled a dexterity saving throw with no modifier, no uh, advantage or disadvantage. And I rolled a second dexterity saving throw uh, with disadvantage, which- Okay, we'll, we'll take that second one with disadvantage. What, what was the roll? I got a six. Okay, six, <laughs> great. So the wire cut through uh, Sudi's legs, clipping her prone in an instant, then cutting chest height in chest height at Leonala and <laughs> um, Edie, knocking them down. And I think that's everybody that failed. No, Quinn also failed. So it would also. I thought you said I hit. made it. I'm sorry? Yeah, she made said it. that with the 13, 13, I just made it. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. I thought you passed, but then I looked and I had an X next to your name. Okay. Um, Quinn, however, uh, happened to kneel, kneel over to pick up a uh, coin that she saw on the ground at that moment, and it went just over her head. Um. Wid and Ellie were far enough in front that they were able to see it coming and managed to jump over it. However, Sister Caverns Fall was not so lucky. And she caught the wire in her midsection, catching on the sword and cutting it through her. Um, effectively ending Sister Caverns Fall holding her though how did it hit her and not the two, me? the two of you were because you managed to step over it but you couldn't like get her completely out of the way wasn't i holding her like bridal style maybe when you were stepping you were each holding her. a side of her yeah you were dragging her that's the way you described it i said i picked her up all right well in my mind you were dragging her <laughs> so <laughs> anyway Sister was going down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We didn't pull the sword um, out, y'all. So, so those of you who failed. And I was already on the ground, too, so. Those of you who failed take nine points of slashing damage. And those of you who passed take four points. That was that was a deadly trap, which I rolled very low. Do I see anything that triggered it? It seems um, make a investigation check, actually. Oh, 
Mm. Nine. Yeah, you don't see what triggered it. Duty gets up to all fours, uh, grimacing, and looks at the sister who she had been helping to carry. Yeah, she is now dead. And as all of you are bleeding, your the blood dripping down from your wounds to the floor is now being drawn towards the door. Is our blood being sucked out of us? Uh, not yet. That's not creepy at all. We need to get out of here before this leads us all dry. Uh, maybe cover your wounds, kids, and let's move along. Do we want light? It is very dark in here. Sudi reaches around her. Is there any sand on the floor? Sand? There yeah. is not, no. There's some mud, probably. Does it feel consistent? The consistency of mud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, the granules, are they about the same consistency throughout, or is it lumpy? <laughs> You're asking a geologist to describe mud. Yes. <laughs> uh <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Layman's terms, back and down. So, so it has it has a silty and a clay feel to it. Okay. Um, if you put it in your mouth, it grits a little bit, but not much. <laughs> I love you so much right now. <laughs> Judy smears that on her leg wounds. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Um, is there like a visual path nearby as well? Like, can we see any sort of path that we can use? There, there is, there is a tunnel. Yeah, it's a thirty foot wide, about twenty foot high passageway that seems to go into the mountainside where this gateway was leading into. Did the sword fall onto the ground? The sword is still in Sister Cavern's vault. Nobody is taking it, taking well, it out. You said that it was caught on the wire. Right. It, the blade was caught on the wire, and it just pulled it down. Okay. So it it just like effectively made the cut a little bit worse. Okay. Is she, you said she was ended, so she's gone now or not gone now? She is very dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Judy asks Edie, did, did did the sword kill her? Do you punch a sword? I don't want to punch that one. <laughs> and I'm pointing directly at Lee. What in all the, the, the world of God were you thinking? Nona takes out her um, manacles. Uh, I don't know that I can act her response. I'm not going to try to be honest, uh, but she would just kind of be like trying to speak, but not getting out words right now um, very well because I she'd still be like sobbing kind of somewhat uncontrollably uh if she got something out it would be along lines of i didn't i didn't mean i don't understand that kind of bit gibberishy but she's not resisting in any way right now to whatever if you smack her or whatever she's not gonna <laughs> do anything at the moment assuming there is an assuming there is not a uh, crazy height difference Edie will 100 percent punch lee in the face no, she's still on the ground right now. She got smacked by the wire, and I guess I just kind of tumbled over it or something, got hurt by it, and I'm still on the she's still on the ground, just kind of <laughs> not. Nona's <laughs> gonna <laughs> lay everything down. She has her manacles out, and she's just gonna silently walk up to Lee and cuff her. Okay, and Edie is punching Lee. Edie's gonna give Lee a. I assume fat that's happening second. before I get there. Yeah, so that's three three points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, really? Okay. I'm going to look at Wid and I'm going to look at my little Nomi buddy. And then, of all people, I'm looking at Sudi. <laughs> Sudi says, Your turn. She you know, was your I... sister, no? No. 
it was Ellie, lying. maybe, but I don't recommend Ellie punch anybody because that whole in half thing. Uh, okay, we need to. What is okay? So let's take stock of the situation really quickly. Weird wire flew at us. Ow. Uh, and that was after strange person I don't know very well put an apparently sentient sword into a religious acolyte. Do I have that right so far? Yes. Now we're punching the person on the ground because we're upsetting spaghetti about it. If she killed your sister. Not I don't related. think she was in her right mind. So we're, we're going to take a little bit of a step back and maybe ask the talking sword what the fuck happened. <laughs> no? Why don't we walk away from the door a little bit and then we'll get the sword to talk to it? Um, Nona's going to help Lee up. I, if you guys start talking about touching the sword, I would yell out and say, don't touch it. Or I'm confused. I don't get it. But also, I was a little suspicious of it to begin with. And I am now not at I'm not a fan although i haven't fully processed what happened yet are you gonna are you gonna stand up when nona helps you up uh so i take it lee said that before sudi grabbed the sword or do you go boneless yeah uh i mean like if you would grab it anyway grab it anyway but i would definitely yell at you before you do that she so she accepts one thing the warning right now <laughs> she sorry she does what she accepts the warning she pauses and doesn't grab it um, and sorry, uh, who was helping? How were you trying <clears throat> to help me up? Um, so I, you were on the ground. I'm assuming you were on your side, so I put you on your face. And I shot you behind your back, like, like, you know, a cop, right? And then she takes your shoulder and tries to help you up. Quinn, did you know that Nona had shackles? I, man. I, don't, I don't think I did, but when you look at me, like with all the, yes. with all that's been going on, she's like distracted and like sniffing and kind of licking <laughs> her lips because there's so much blood around. <laughs> quit, quit. Out of game, I forgot I had manacles until maybe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Are they holy manacles? No. Oh. <laughs> I know. I know. I didn't realize until like a while ago. I'm sorry, but I I know now. Yeah, you know, it's okay. He <clears throat> sees Quinn Brilliant licking face. her lips and nods toward the sister and says, "You hungry?" I just. Um, I, I was thinking of my mother's cooking. That's all. <laughs> Mom cooks oh, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've never no, no. Thing in so many ways. <laughs> you know, so Cashew didn't really do it now. for me either. Okay, let's go. <laughs> is, is Lee standing up now? Uh, I, I would get up, but I'm like crumpled but standing version if that makes sense you're stiff but you're not resisting yeah sure yeah okay are you kind of trying to hunch over some like hide yourself a little bit not Is that in word, what you mean yeah like in, in the emotional sense when someone's so upset they just like you know bodies naturally move inwards like that i'm not trying to hide from you guys but i'm just horrified still a lot mm -hmm. to process <laughs> you just killed somebody just well you guys wouldn't know that because i wouldn't tell you so never mind <laughs> you know i would say i had trouble my first time but mine was a zombie <laughs> it was a little redundant i mean so mine was a tortoise uh, admittedly i am a little confused because we had this really big deal that I made about the child. 
and that we made previously about the horny one. So do we need to bury the sister before we go any further? Not we as are close in to the a door. battle zone. I say yes. My, my character. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop saying I when I refer to my character, if I can't. <laughs> we bury the dead after the job, battle yeah. is complete. You are correct. We kind of are in the middle of things. Okay. Maybe, uh, Nona, could you grab her, her thing? in case something happens so we'll have something to take back in case maybe um are one of you not going to carry her with us no i may no. be small but i'll help carry her no um, i'm not about to leave her just uh, fine i'll carry her i would help carry her she as well. is right no. beside the door we will pass her on the way out does this feel like unhallowed ground? It does not. Okay. Uh, um, sorry, I at least need to pay my respects not close to the thing that killed her. And I look at the door. But and I actively avoid these hits. And and we need to just carry ourselves away from this door. Uh, did we agree on lights or no? I have a candle. We can use a torch. We do you still have that map? I do, but I think we should get to the end of this tunnel first. All right. Um, I want to actively check for trap as we're walking. I don't know if I need to keep saying that to you or if just like every couple of minutes I just roll. Do you want so, to hold the torch? Or what you need me to do? Yeah, so so how it works is if, you, if you're if you not saying that you actively do it, I just use your passive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's assumed that you are kind of constantly doing it, but if you wish to make a roll, then, then you need to be like, I am actively searching for traps because otherwise I just base everything on your passive perception. Okay. Yeah, after that ghost ship incident, I'm going to be actively looking for traps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Me. Sorry, I lost my thing here. Google Drive is being annoying right now. Okay, here we go. So continuing on. The path descends into the darkness, stretching out as far as your vision will allow, though the passage remains roughly 30 feet in diameter. It feels sparse, except for the occasional spiderweb or puddle. Quinn continues to scan for traps at every step. Um, for the next several minutes of cautious travel, aided only by the shifting flames of torches. So there's a tunnel and then this is beyond the tunnel or this is in the tunnel? You are in the tunnel. Okay. Oh, God damn it. It's being really annoying right now. Sorry, guys. What, you didn't memorize it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wrote up this huge thing and Google Drive is like, I can't find your document. Um, de dum de dum. Okay. So once you enter, you get to a point where the walls change, the edges of the tunnel change, and you can you get the perception that it's opening up into a larger room. I would stop immediately. Okay. As soon as I feel that there's not a clear path ahead of us, mm -hmm. I would stop. So, so going. Just, just to be clear, who is carrying torches? I know that there are several people who don't have dark vision. Um, I offer I you not, a torch. I don't. Oh, you did. Okay. 
So I'm giving, I gave you a torch. I gave you the, fl well, I, I lit it with my flint. Um, someone else lead, should lead Lee because I'm going to be, I wanted to carry Nona, or I'm Nona. I wanted to carry Sister Cavern's home. I, uh... I mean, if, if one of the humans needs this torch, I, I can see in the dark. I'll hold the torch and grab Lee's arm. Awesome. Okay, so we have one I got torch. Her. I so have far. one. I assume there was going to be someone else who had a torch. Did you guys bring torches? I, I, have, I have a question I did. Um, so the sword is a two-handed weapon when you're using it. Um, the sword is one-handed or two-handed. Okay, then I was holding both a torch and a, the sword, so... Um, oh, so you had one. I guess I probably would have dropped it as soon as the feeling dissipated for me, and I would have been wielding it as uh, one-handed since I was naturally holding it that way at the moment anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so the torch, I guess, would have just been on the ground next to me, probably still lit, assuming the ground allowed for it. Okay. The sister's carrying the sword, right? So oh. far as I'm aware, the sword is still in Sister the sword is still in. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have touched it. It's still there. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> do we still feel the the blood from our wounds being pulled toward the door? You do not. Yeah. Okay. Once once you got to about 15 feet away, you no longer felt that. And she was human, right? She was a dwarf. Dwarf, okay. Ellie. Mm -hmm. Ellie. Hmm. But could we take this the sword out? Would that be a little easier? The whole way around. Just don't don't touch it. I don't know what happened, but. <laughs> The stabby person doesn't need to talkie talkie right now. <laughs> um, I think that uh, we can just leave it in for now. I just Until... don't want it to be disrespectful because this is like the second time in, you know, maybe 24 hours. Uh, Wid digs through her bag and pulls out a sock and says, I can put this over the hilt and remove it, if that makes everyone feel comfortable. I don't mind touching. Well, the person who did, who was obviously very distraught, says don't touch it, so I'm trying to find a compromise. Compromise is good. See, the druid is wise. I like the dwarf. The dwarven wise sock lady. How many socks do you have? As many as I can make. That is outstanding. So I just, you're walking and it's kind of wobbling and it. If it makes everyone else more comfortable, so be it. I don't want it to hit you. And it kind of makes a rather somber situation look a little ridiculous. I don't think it looks ridiculous. Well, you know, opinions matter. Okay. Sock? Hilt. Pull. Okay. All right. You pull the sword free, and you now have a sock hilted sword. <laughs> Quinn? A sword cozy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a sword cozy. Quinn, can you hold this? Yeah, this you bet. Okay. And I'm going to torch. And Lee and Quinn maybe keep the sword away from the stabby person. Imagine Quinn is dragging it behind her. <laughs> <laughs> and we're walking. Okay. She just walking. takes a little lick. <laughs> Do you actually lick it? A little. It is not a the lollipop. The tip of her tongue touches it. Like in a really <laughs> stealthy way Quinn. before she just like starts walking. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Roll for stealth. Flag yeah. <laughs> I will. I will do a contested stealth sword. check. Contested, contested stealth roll. Yes. No. 
it, is Quinn trying to be sneaky about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead, stealth. And is Quinn carrying a torch or is she in the darkness? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can see in the dark. Is Am I right near your Unless you gave the torch to someone else. I did. Oh, yeah. Yes, well, then she did. Know. She gave it to uh, Mavly, Mavly, I believe. Yeah. Well, you only have to beat a 14. Well, I'm going to roll a d20 plus two. I don't even know who to root for in this one. <laughs> I got a 12. I see it. She synced it. <laughs> Quinn. Well, that means passive perception got it too in Cindy <laughs> Yeah, those of you with passive perceptions over 12 or over. Oh, 12. Do you, re do you react to being called out at all? You just said my name. I said, Quinn, what are you doing? <laughs> Madly asked me to hold the sword. I'm just hold I'm holding the sword. We do not ingest our fallen comrades. I'm not trying to have a bite of sister. That that's not what I meant. You were licking the sword. Grows up. I'm gonna lean to Lee and go, see, we're all a little fucked up. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> does, she, does she hear anything when her tongue touches Yeah, it? I was gonna <laughs> say, like, does it possess her with the tongue? Your tongue is very <laughs> angry now. The <laughs> <laughs> and, Booty is and, watching you all with an odd expression. And apparently Leonala is now vomiting. <laughs> just to make it clear, if she didn't like lick the sword, it was just like a it was like a Ariana Grande licking the donuts like, situation. Still gross. Oh no. Yeah, but Lee's, <laughs> Lee's not having it after how she feels about what just happened. <laughs> I just I don't know what came over me. I never tasted blood before. It kind of looked like um, strawberry. We don't. Just don't do it again. Yes, Nona. Inside she check. Yes. She yes, Nona. Yes. <laughs> That's something my grandchildren say to me. Inside check. <laughs> sure. Oh, Sure. Quinn can roll either deception oh or persuasion, um, depending on whether you're light, whether you intend to keep that or not. Um, but don't tell us what you roll unless Nona beats you. I rolled a 16 plus four, so that's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay, so I'm going to have to. Oh, shit. <laughs> Things In are exciting. <laughs> could do it Quinn or not depending on if we want the truth I don't know you can't handle the truth I can't right now <laughs> I'm not prepared okay yeah I did not beat a 20 is that is that a seven me oh I because it was a don't tell us what you rolled I rolled a, oh. I rolled a physical die and got an eight Cool. And um, okay. Yeah, so I didn't. So was Quinn lying? Quinn was not lying. Quinn wasn't lying. No. Right. Not intentionally. Nona, Nona squints her eyes at you. All right. I think with that, then... with that with that big of a margin of a, of success, I think Nona might might get a little bit of intuition into. Um, the motives behind Quinn's little act there. So like, it's up to you to decide how how much you think Nona would have perceived in Quinn's um, <clears throat> stature at that moment. Okay. Um, I I mean I think that. I think that Nona's been around Quinnahawk long enough to notice that some kind of change is taking place in that 
well, the taste, the little taste, and then, um, and then when, when she attacked sister before, or it wasn't her, um, I think you will have seen that too, right? I was, I was in front and not, so I, I, I don't think Nona would have seen you as that was happening. She would have, she had her back to everything because she was in front and then she turned around and immediately zeroed in on sister, sister camera as well, unless you were next to her. I mean, I did stab her in the chest, didn't I? Oh, all from the way before. Back then, from before. Yeah. Got sleeping. it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Like, like, could I? Could could we say like? She knows that you don't intend on doing it again, but she also knows you enjoyed it when you did it. Like a little too much. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I um, think she would. I think she would also she, perceive that. If if she did enjoy it, she definitely was um, upset about that fact. Okay. Maybe scared about it. So, right. Like so a, when she mm-hmm. says she's not going to do it, she's being truthful, but also like there's a flicker of fear in her eyes. Not mm-hmm. from not from Nona. From something else. <laughs> all right. Um, her reaction doesn't change. She she just squints her eyes and she's like, all right. And then, and then, um, Wid, why did we stop? Because we need to stay on the path, and the path is not clear now. The light from the torches is illuminating, from what you can see, a square room. It looks to be about 30 feet in all dimensions, so 30 feet wide. 30 feet high, but instead of the round-ish tunnel, it's a square room. You can attribute the sound of water to a small stone fountain next to the entrance, carved into the face of the stone wall. The room is lined with metal braziers and six massive stone columns which bear intricate carvings. Uh, The braziers are not lit, by the way. The walls also bear imagery, and even the ground seems seems to have been marked with inscriptions. The room contains two wooden desks, one wooden chair, two mannequins, a third mannequin, which is opposite the side, um, on the opposite side of the room to them, Um, sits beside a pile of decaying fabric. Uh, Whit will pull out the map um, and explain to everyone that I feel this is important for our journey. I'm not sure how yet. I believe we need to follow it, but it will not always make sense to us. Um, So she pulls out the map and what does she see, Z? All right, you look at the map. Make a sanity saving throw, please. All right. Those are my least favorite words lately. (laughs) (laughs) At nine. Okay. Isn't that like your your second or third nine? All right. I'm not a yes man. (laughs) As as Wid says that, she pulls out this weathered map that looks like it has been um, made on some type of pale leather that has been stitched together and some ink on one side. And she unrolls it and she's looking at it, holding it out. And she she kind of sits there unmoving for a minute, two minutes three minutes oh madly would not have waited that long definitely not nope don't have the patience (laughs) we would have made it like maybe a minute and a half ish if that okay 
Does she normally do that? Sudi gives Wid a shove and says, you dance the flute when the drums are sounding and moves forward. You, Wid, you come back to realization after getting lost in the swimming movement of imagery on the map um, with Sudi shoving you. And to you, you just pulled out the map and looked at it. You don't remember anything that happened in the last minute and a half. Am I aware that I was shoved or just I suddenly come to? You're aware that you were shoved. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Are you uh, okay, Wit? That was weird. Uh, what was weird other than me being shoved? Well, do you have to look at the map quietly for an extended period? You were just silent for like more than a minute. It was a very long time. Hmm. It was not long to me. Oh. Does that, do you know if that happens a, a lot when you look at the map? The map is weird. Okay. Even for me, even should, for me. <laughs> should we, should we poke at you when you look at it in the future? <laughs> I may need the sword. Yeah. Okay. I look at Quinn. Okay. Don't lick it. <laughs> Noted. Um, she'll take the sword and she'll um, say to the group, I'm going to remove the sock now. I suspect that we're safe because the gate is resealed. But if not, be on your guard. He's um, just going to take a, a couple steps back from Wid. Just in um, case you go crazy. Well, <laughs> she, will, she will step toward you again and be like, actually, will you assist me? We would start talking at this point and say, wait, wait, we, we must talk about the sword. <laughs> Are you guys going to listen or no? Because that I need to know. Wid will listen. Um, man, what did she say? No, no, stop what she's uh, doing. Lee would, Lee would say, I, I don't understand, but I've, I've never killed anyone before. I don't, I don't know, just, I would not touch that. I don't know what happens. I don't think it's safe. I don't think we should carry that. Something dark is about it or, or something about it is dark, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> is it darkness or is it determination, a purity of purpose? I don't understand what you mean. It, all I know is I've never felt that way before. And the sword, the sword has some ideas of what we should be doing and I do not trust it. And I don't think that feeling was for me or yeah that feeling was for me what is it that you felt hatred and i just felt that that must be done but i don't feel that way now i would have never i would have never done such a thing i don't i don't understand what happened i did not feel like myself did you feel hatred towards the sister or towards something else? Um, and how do I describe that? Uh, the hatred was for, uh, you described it, uh, sorry, Z, you said that it made me feel hatred for the door and what was happening. Is that how you described it? The, the hatred is towards the nameless God, but I, I don't think that Lee really would have been able to identify what that sense of hatred was specifically directed towards. You would have just felt a very strong sense of hatred and a strong sense of duty. Okay. Um, then Lee would say, I'm not sure, but my hatred was not towards sister, but it was overwhelming and just somehow that felt like 
what should be done, but I don't understand why, why that would need to be done. Are you sure that was the sword and not something about this place? I don't know, but the sword speaks. Have you ever, I, I've never encountered oh. a thing that's, does not seem like something that should be trusted. It's, it's a sword. <laughs> Well, considering the past four days of my life, I don't know what can be trusted. So I have not. Been, oh, good. Oh, we just, the last time, and pardon Ellie, I know a little sensitive at the moment, and Edie, you also seem to be affected, so apologies. But the last time the sister was stabbed in the chest, it was a doppelganger for our lovely little Quinnahawk here. So, uh, it was the silent one taking on her form, I am assuming. So, uh, I, I don't know. Was it the sword? Was it something in this place that's supposed to seal away? Something that I don't understand impacting you? I, I don't know. See, would you think that I would think it was like... I'm suspicious of the sword already. Would the sword of itself itself given me any indication that it was the sword? Would I have picked up on that based on the interactions at all? Or would it just be my own suspicion not trusting magic essentially in this scenario and a talking sword being magical? I, I think I will let you make that decision. Um. I think I would internally, if, if I'm making that choice, I think I would internally know it was the sword, but not be able to explain why. And I'm also heavily suspicious of magic as a character, not because of, um, just because of hearing bad things about it, not necessarily I have a personal reason against it. So, um, yeah, maybe this just solidifies that that fear of magic that is so prominent throughout the realm that magic just can't be trusted. Yeah, that, that probably is, uh, yeah. Um, and sorry, you, you'd ask me, uh, you saying it was, um, asking if it was the sword of the environment. I would probably at that point just say it was the sword, I know it, even if I didn't fully totally know it, I would have said that. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Because she thinks it's true. Can uh, I insight check her? You can. And Nancy, if you will roll either deception or persuasion, your choice. Uh, that's a natural 20 plus four. I'm so <laughs> upset that damage. I got a natural 20 on this one. The <laughs> <laughs> well, dice have been on fire tonight. Uh, and I rolled a three, so. <laughs> rolled a three. all right so was he's a was great Le liar <laughs> was leonala um lying uh i was persuading at that point i like i if i if i was at all unsure i would have convinced myself at that point that it, i was right about it being the sword anyway so i was persuading yeah so i think nona would probably pick up on that that she's really un she's unsure initially if if it was her or if it was a sword but she has now convinced herself that it was in fact the sword and she believes that All right no no whips around because this whole time she's been crouched over sister Kevin follows bonnie she whips around when you say i know it was a sword and she she looks at you with her nona stare season to your soul well if it was the sword can we take the shackles off maybe i as a character lee would not think it was her because she knows that she wouldn't do something like that so just for reference i mean you could say that like you could totally be like a character i know i wouldn't do that to sister cavern's fall you know well 
she also wouldn't necessarily be defending herself in this situation either. So uh, she doesn't say that. But I uh, think with that with that huge disparity of that 24 versus Nancy's role, I think that Nona would probably pick up on this. Okay. So I could tell one, no malice. Two, she's not the silent one in disguise. And three, she had no control at that time. Is that pretty accurate? Um, you're welcome to make whatever assumptions that you want. All right. While the others are talking, Sudi sits down next to Quinn and nods toward Nona Ellie. Some people are emotionable about their relatives' bodies. <laughs> um, actually, Sister Kevin's fall was not related to them. To you? Or to Nona, or Who's to just who is she? Uh, she's not ours. Um, that's part of her name. That's <laughs> that's part of what she does. That's part of who she is. She's named Sister. Yes, as long oh. as I've known her. Sudi looks title. a little more confused, but doesn't ask any more questions. Sudi, it's a title. A title for... Well, she's, she was talking to Quinn quietly, so you Quinn. wouldn't hear. Yeah. Oh, I thought you, you were next like a, to Nona. Nona sees and hears all, though. <laughs> she gestured toward Nona, because Nona's being oh, kind of weird. Grandma bat ears. <laughs> <laughs> eyes on the back of her head ears <laughs> everywhere someone's trying to be sneaky <laughs> I love how sister Savorite Caverns Fall has just become sister Sister. it's because you gave her such a long name yeah. no one remembers Savorite sister C I can spell it now though <laughs> um, C. We eat, we eat. <laughs> so Wid will say well, since we are stopped, would we like to take Maybe. care of the sister and her last rites? I feel we have things to discuss and decisions to make before we continue. I agree. Well, I don't like leaving Savarite Catherine's Falls body in this place. In this place that has been sealed to protect the world? Exactly. It seems noble to me. If it's any consolation, we could take some of her belongings with us. To you can see back so, to, uh, to town. Um, no, no, Ellie has out? already taken her pack off of her. So she's laying down with no pack. Um, and she she's just kind of cleaned up with her with her um weapon in her hand over her chest like this um with her pack to the side um i can take care of her things would you like a hand with laying her down to rest that's right and all tears because she would have done last rites Yes. All right. I suppose if we're not going to come back for her. We could always mark her grave. And uh, if we can make it out, then maybe we can set up a better memorial for her. We could name the church after her for her sacrifice. Wasn't it already going to be named after no. her? <laughs> that was her that dream. That was a dream. <laughs> oh, right. That's right. That's <laughs> I think she would like that. Uh, while this is happening, uh, Wid wants to talk a little bit about magic as the one who's used to it, if anyone wants to listen. 
And she'll direct this uh, specifically towards Lee and say, it is natural to mistrust magic. It's perhaps even instinctual. Uh, my entire life, I have felt that directed toward me. And yet, magic is like a weapon. It can be used for good or for bad. It is the person or the entity wielding it that has the blame and not the magic itself. Then how could I not stop? I am angry as I say that, <laughs> or Lee's angry when she says that. Because that sword was protecting the outside world from the nameless that is sealed in here. And we opened it to save people, but we exposed the whole world in the process. We would still kind of be a little shut down and would just not respond to that right now. She's not like directing any anger at you or anything um, or your character, but she's just not getting it. <laughs> like, no, and, and, and Wood's completely used to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and Z, feel free to tell me if I'm making too many assumptions about Wid's understanding of magic and how it yep. works or, okay. Go on. You, you, you use magic. You can have whatever understanding you think is within the limits of your intelligence. Well, so, I mean, if I'm making leaps of logic, uh, leaps of logic in terms of, uh, the sealing of the gate and the intentions of the sword, uh, those sure. kind of things, yep. um, yeah, if you say anything that I think is blatantly wrong, I'll correct you. Okay, right. perfect. Thank you. I, I prefer to, um, in in the case of this, I'm leaning more on a shared world building experience as opposed to a strict set of rules that you all have to adhere to. So. Okay. Uh, Lee is kind of average-ish with intelligence, so she's mostly just overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment. Uh, Wid will approach you, um, will not touch you, but will just say, it is not your fault. And I believe you will have to come to peace with this because you will need to use this sword again. Uh, Lee looks extremely offended <laughs> as soon as you mentioned that. And like, you said you, did you, touch her shoulder? Uh, no, it, she didn't, but she was close. Okay. And then she uh, pulled back. Lee would kind of jerk away from you when you mentioned that and kind of look horrified like a like a F no kind of face. <laughs> uh, yeah, she'd say, I'm not touching that sword. And then, yeah. It could be the difference in our success. And then she'll walk away and leave you with that. Okay, yeah, she's defiantly pissed off at everything right now. <laughs> Fair. I think I think both Wid and Nancy will recover three points of sanity damage for that. Did I say Wid and Nancy? Wid and Leonala. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks, Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nancy's like, sweet, no therapy this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for that moment when somebody calls up their therapist and be like, my dungeon master fucked me up. <laughs> I have a negative one to sanity. What's you don't know that hasn't score? happened yet. <laughs> He's giving me these sanity points and I keep doing everything I can to get him back and he gets like he takes them away in 20s and I get it back in threes. <laughs> There's only so many socks I can darn, damn it. <laughs> darn it. I mean everybody yeah. has two feet. <laughs> so far. So far. Yeah, Just wait. So far. <laughs> I mean Wid could have four. <laughs> Make extra big bear socks. <laughs> At a bear food. <laughs> Um, and FYI, Z, um, old Siggy is at the top of my pack within um, my range of hearing. Yeah, so um, old Siggy won't really talk to you unless you initiate. Oh, I thought it let me know something even if I didn't, though. No, you have to initiate it. 
Okay. Because there, there's the the magical phrase to activate it, basically. Oh, it's not like activated once. It has to. No, it's each time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, then Wid will pull it out. Um. Well, how long do I know how long it's activated? Um, it's activated as long as you wish to continue the conversation. Okay. Basically, you, you have like a, a drape thing that you put over the cage, and whenever you put the drape down, it deactivates it. Did Kess just freeze? No, I'm sorry. I'm reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very intently, apparently. <laughs> While Kess is reading <laughs> and catching up on what Wood is going to do, um, Madeline's kind of going to look at Sudi. Do you have the dagger ashy leg pokey thing that we did before? Well, yes, but shouldn't we wait until after the battle? How many dots? One for each comrade. So we could, it doesn't have to, we can wait on the dots. I'm not familiar with your customs. I just like it. Well, we usually wait until after we're done fighting. We surely probably should have for Sulan too, but okay, got it. Case point taken. Remember one so far. Hopefully that's it. <laughs> So uh, I have a question for Z, go ahead. You're good. Oh, uh, Z, I was just thinking of the last line of old Siggy, uh, will sometimes whisper to its owner without being prompted if danger is near. That's what I was inquiring oh, about. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not currently whispering to you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but she doesn't need to activate it. Um, yeah, for a conversation you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I thought you meant. Sorry. All right. Um, so you're sitting at the entrance of this room in the dark? Yes, and I would like to read the map with the sword um, if we anyone has torches still. It's not, we're not in the dark, so you should be able to see things. There's well, you, you are in the, the dark you, as well. If anybody yeah. wanted to light those up, yeah, you you are in the dark, but it is illuminated by torches. Okay. Yeah. Should we light these things on the wall or wait? I don't think that's a smart idea. Why they were put here for magic put things on the wall? <laughs> Look, magic can be triggered in many ways. We should be careful how we tread. Okay. Wait, do you know if any of these are magical? Not yet, but I feel that we should not tarry and we should continue on our path once we find the path. Is it... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, if anyone has an issue with me reading this map and holding the sword and if they would like to guard or hold me in some way so that I cannot do damage I am okay with that I'll hold you if you'd like me to I mean is there an amount of time that you are intending on commuting with the sword and the book I have you lost track of time the first time. Right, yeah, I have no concept of what that time will be. If I'm not speaking, shake me or something. So check you in five minutes. Um, Edie is familiar with what this process is like. I think that she might know if it is different than before. Edie, do you feel confident in that? I'm honestly not sure, but if you would like any sort of help, I I would be honored to 
help keep things as smoothly as possible so we don't lose another one of our party. Yeah, and anyone can be a part of this and can hear me read the map if they're curious. They can look at the map. Um, none of this is, is hidden. Um, but yeah, Z, I would like to try to do what we did before. Okay. Um, and in this space. Yep. I'll so with I can't try to follow Wid's directions. Okay. So Wid is taking out the map and rolling it open. And Edie is also looking at the map. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, is anybody else looking at the map? Zudi's trying to talk to Quinn again. Okay. Listening, but not looking at the map. Not looking at the map? Yeah, Edie okay. is, e is just going to do what she did before with Wid, which yep. is listen. Cool. All right. Um, both Wid and Edie, please give me sanity saving throws. And I'm also still, I'm holding the sword without the sock as well at this point, so... Without the sock, great. Correct, yeah. Yep. Are you talking to the sword or? Uh, I mean, I think it talks to me first, but yes. Um, I got an eight. Got a four. Okay. A four and an eight, awesome. Um, the, you said, how long were you gonna wait? Five minutes, is that? I said, if I'm not talking, shake me or something. Yeah. Okay. So um, as Wid opens the map and both Edie and Wid start looking at the map um, and there's, there's an awkward silence as you're waiting for her to start translating what supposedly the sword is uh, feeding her information. Um, that awkward silence continues and continues. and continues. And both Edie and Wid seem to be unmoving just looking at this map. Oh, one of them. I was listening but not looking, so I am not picking up on this immediately. Oh, after like a minute or so. Again, not a ton of patience. <laughs> Boop. Is this the same burial ritual she's doing that she did for, I forgot her name. Sulan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I put it in the chat because I didn't want to interrupt. But um, Nona's like- read. I can't read Nona's like 10 minutes into the burial ritual at this point, probably. Okay. okay so- In that case, Sudi uh, uh, nudges Mavli and says, if, if you're doing the burial now, then I'll prepare the dots. Thanks. I thought we were going to wait. I am so confused. <laughs> also, I'm going to walk up and just kind of tap both of them, because I assume that Edie and Wit are close to each other. Boop, boop. Yes. Are there any sticks around? No, actually. Well, there might be in the room. There probably is something in the room, but you guys Sudi not... moves in looking for sticks to burn. <laughs> okay, great. Um, let's see. So there, there are the um, the mannequins. There are three mannequins, two on one side of the room, one on the other. Please don't touch those. Um, there's piles of linen. Um, not really any sticks per se, but the There's mannequins. Yes. Right. What? Two desks There's and a chair. Right. Two desks and a chair. Mm -hmm. Two Wooden? chairs, actually. Wooden. Uh, yes, wooden. Okay, she cuts a leg off one. A one wooden chair, sorry. Okay, yeah, so you're gonna break the chair? Yeah. Okay, you break the chair uh, and a loud crash 
uh, will probably pull Wid and Edie out of what is seemingly a trance. Well, she broke one leg off. Wouldn't the other three still hold it up? Maybe. Depends Depends the balance of the chair. We'll, we'll say yeah, but still, okay. the, I think the sound of breaking the wood, snapping the wood, it's fairly okay. loud sound, um, would have pulled them out of their um, trance. And Sudi moves back to the group to start a little fire. How long were we looking at this? Too Maybe. long, says Sudi. It seemed to you, Edie and Wid, that no time passed. Does Sudi say too long? Yeah. Well, then why didn't you shake us? You were doing magic. And? Well, don't wake someone who is doing magic. But I said that if we don't say something right away to shake us. So why didn't Medley, you? Medley tried to poke you. No, I think the wood thing happened first. Yeah, I think the wood happened first. Yeah, Mavly definitely would have waited that long, I'm not going to lie, but that's okay, it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no worries. Mavly may have also been distracted with the whole burial preparation <laughs> and person still in manacles. Like, could I get to Nona and steal the key and unlock Lee? Would yeah, she that, that was my hammer if I did it? <laughs> that was my assumption is that Mavly was preoccupied. Wait, am I not? I thought I was no longer in manacles. Or am I? I, I didn't give anybody the key. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Good I got sad, <laughs> all right? I got sad and I got distracted and I did not free you. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just uh, chilling, I guess. Yeah, we, he's a little distraught by this whole situation. <laughs> Again. And no tea. Wait, would you still like a hand with this or yes were, right to, were you don't... also looking at the map Edie? I, I was looking at the map i'm sorry why don't we try it where we don't look at the map but we hold the sword over the map are you comfortable with that all right but if we take too long somebody wake us because i would like to at least help somewhat after this with putting Sister Kevin's fall to rest. So if you don't speak within like a count of 20, we're gonna nudge you and jostle you, okay? That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And this can wait until after last rites, if if you would prefer. Please, I, I don't mean to be a bother, but I, I can't just leave Nona to do all the work. Okay, Edie, why don't you go help Nona? Quinn can poke us, and I'll sit with Wid. Nona and Lee, maybe hang with Sudi quietly. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Lee's talking isn't what got somebody killed. I think Lee can talk. I'm happy to I'm help if you anyone wants it. Oh, you want to help me, Lee? Well, <laughs> wait, are you meaning like holding the sword? That's that's me asking that. No, I would hold the sword. Uh, but, but you witnessed what happened earlier, so you might be of assistance with this. <clears throat> uh, man. So Lee was actually referencing any kind of burial ritual type thing. Oh, Wid knows. Uh, but <laughs> Lee doesn't realize that that was not picked up on when she was saying that and just doesn't know how to respond because she still does not want to touch anything magical right now. I guess she just looks dumbstruck and okay. just kind of shakes her head no. <laughs> uh, Wid will wait until after last rites to continue this. Okay. She's so... gonna make her way over to Nona um, and roll up her sleeves and you'll see a um, old sort of weather tattoo of uh, uh, Peller or the uh, equivalent. Mm -hmm. 
just right on the uh, on the forearm. Okay. Yeah, for for you that would be um Celagon. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh she's got the tattoo of Celagon right on her um on her forearm. And we'll move uh on over to Nona and ask. All right, well you know uh the new gods better than than I do. Can you walk me through putting Sister C to rest? Yeah. Um, no, no, just kind of silently motions to like with the the grave digging. Um, we're just kind of going to be pulling away. Well, wait, are we on stone or? You are on stone. Yeah, I was yeah, just okay. going to comment on that. Oh, literally, literally. <laughs> okay, so um, what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to give respects because we can't keep carrying her. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can cover her with the cloth. Edie will take her um her uh whatever the equivalent of a, of a coat would be. Well, Edie there's will a take there's her, a her coat off in it. There is a pile of a linen pile in of in the clothes. corner of the room. How old was Sister's cabin fall? She was probably around. She was about one hundred and seventy ish. Seven. Not that a human could tell. Um. So my plan was to do the rites as she is and then cover her with something. So mm -hmm. like the cloth. Does she have like a cloak or her bedroll that we could kind of shove them in? The, the, the she, bedroll. She had a cloak. Um, she, she also had a bedroll. And there is, of course, the linen in the corner. It's up to you. We can do the cloak and the bed roll and see how that looks. All right. Um, and uh, we can do one of those call and response prayer things where, where like she says a prayer and then you, you repeat it like a pledge kind of, but, but just like just a general ritual thing as you know, they're doing their thing. Dig it. So who's participating in the funeral? Edie, Nona? Uh, Sudi will stand nearby, but she won't do the repeating part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any indication of how you guys want me to, want me to participate or not participate? Because she would just um, be going along with whatever. Like, if you don't make any indication, then she'll just kind of hang to the side with her head down kind of thing but if you ask I think that's appropriate if you wanted to also repeat the the um the ritual the words of the ritual um as ed is doing that's also a way of participating but um nona's just kind of gonna let everyone decide whether or not they're going to be a part of this because it just needs to be done as quickly as possible mm -hmm. I guess Lee will kind of partake if no one seems to be looking offended. She's just trying to do whatever is the most respectful thing to do in this really awkward situation. Um, I'm imagining her as like a non-Catholic going to a Catholic like um, like mass. German uh, mass. Thank you. I knew that word. Um, and and you know, there's all those things that you say in the mass and you're just like I, <laughs> I don't know what this means but I'm repeating it I'm just gonna, yeah. like, like a beat too slow but you're trying and we yeah. appreciate you that would be happening <laughs> that's a pretty good uh, analogy cool so real, real quick 
just show of hands, who is participating in the funeral ritual? Uh, besides the talking. Okay. I, I cool. think, I mean, yeah. yeah. I like that I'm you raised there. your hand, Z, for the sister. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I will definitely be over there, um, probably standing next to Sudi, ready to answer any questions. Yeah. You were going to be by Wid to help her. Because that's Wid what I was. It off. Oh. Oh, okay. If if Quinnahawk doesn't have to stand by to poke people, she'll participate. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, when duty's delayed, <laughs> uh, Wid will not participate. Okay. Cool. So those of you who participate in the the funeral and the recollection of a if not friend, definitely a friendly compatriot in arms, um, the organizer for the excursion to rescue the children, the sole reason all of you had initially been brought together um, and remembering her and paying respects to her, um, you recover five stress damage. Right. And stress damage you keep track of, right? I keep track of. Yep. You can also keep track of it, but my numbers are probably going to be different from your numbers. <laughs> we don't know where our baseline started. Yep. Uh, Wid will take out the jug of mead and the wooden cups and set them out for people. Uh, she won't fill them, but if anyone wants to, they can. Distributor of cashews, purveyor of prayers, Sister Caverns Fall, we will miss you dearly. All right. I'm so sure after, the, long warrior. <laughs> after the funeral, um, you now have this room. There is a and, uh, closed. Judy's gonna. Mix up the stuff, the dots. Awesome. As, Two dots. Um, was it Mavly's dagger last time? Okay, does she offer her dagger again? Yep. Oh, so he dips it into the mixture and first um, pokes her own leg, adding to a row of dots. And then she dips it again and offers it to Mavly. She pauses and said, she wasn't your sister, right? Not blood relation. She dips it and adds to next to the first thought, just above it. Um, anyone else line up? Edie? Uh, I guess Lee goes okay. up. These are just I'm just, I'm bound to myself. I'm not like shackled to anybody else. No, you just have your hands like handcuffed behind your back. Okay. So, Sudi dips the dagger and did uh, Lee hold out her leg? Sure. I'm just thinking, like, how would I do that? <laughs> Adds a dot there. Did anyone else hold out their leg? Edie will take a while but then ultimately silently approach okay. and offer her leg. So he dips the dagger and pokes Edie in the leg next to the ankle. I will take one as well. She adds a dot to Nona Ellie's ankle. What's everybody doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Remembering the fallen. It's a Sudi okay. thing. Okay. Sister Caverns Fold has one on her leg, and now I have one on mine. I'll just remember with my brain. <laughs> that is totally okay. <laughs> so, uh, map, room, room, map. 
Is there a door on the other side of the room? There is a wooden door. the mess with a mixture and hands the dagger back to Madly. Okay. There is a wooden door on the opposite side of the room. This room, however, has a whole bunch of murals on the side and the mannequins and the desks. Right. Did you say what the murals depicted? I did not. Nobody, you stopped as soon as I described the basics of the room. All right. Would, um, what can we see from where we are? What, what are they depicting? Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, from standing outside of the room, it's hard to tell. However, on the east wall, so you're coming in from, assume you're coming in from the south. On the east wall, there is a mural there that depicts the deities banding together to battle the nameless god. There is some text there um, that looks like it's written in Elvish. Which deities are represented? Yeah. Um, what, are you proficient in religion? Is Sudi proficient in religion? No, but I think she recognized the two that she worships. Yeah. I'm proficient. I would know. Okay, so um, since Sudi actually is in the room... I think she's the only one of you that actually went in the room. Um, you would recognize um, that there are depictions of both Ferrati and Utagan. Okay. Um, there are also depictions of Seligon, the Lord of Light or Ilmater or the Lord of Suffering, excuse me. Um, there are depictions of Nel Deech, the God of the Deep. There are depictions of Tuliga, the Dwarven God of the Forge. Um, there are depictions of the Draconic Gods. Um, are you still holding the sword, Wid? Yes. It, it's, you hear the sword is like muttering to itself as if it's reading. I will pay closer attention. It, it seems to be reading the text around the room written on the walls just kind of to itself as if it's looking at them um you know like it's getting a lay of the land the the gist in elvish? Hmm? is it saying it in elvish or in it a is. language would you understand okay it, it yeah sorry it is saying it in elvish and other languages it it will it will say some things in elvish and then it will speak it will switch to a language you don't recognize that is more guttural and broken. And then it will switch to a language that mixes growls with consonants. Um, and then uh, it will switch to, um, it, I think it has, I think I put a sentence here in, in Dwarven even. There any draconic? Okay, so let's let's do this. If, for those of you who are actively looking around the room, please make a perception check. The 21. Oh, I get a net 20. Okay, yes. any bonuses? No. I get a okay. net 20. Wow, lots of lots of high rolls here. I got lower than my passive perception. <laughs> and That's my first on net five. 20. <laughs> I got a 19 plus two. Okay, so uh, Wid, I assume you're listening to what the sword has to say. Um, uh, are you going to communicate back with the sword or? Actually, I want to pull a, there is no Dana, only Zool and just recite it uh, by Verbatim. sound. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> cool. 
Um, so does anybody understand Elvish? No. Um, de dum de dum. I think I know broken dwarvish. Let me double check. There are dwarves here. We know dwarvish. Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> that makes sense. You're good. Oh no, the dwarvish isn't in this room. Sorry. Um, you do recognize that there appears to be some graffiti on some of the murals that is written in what looks like Infernal. Um, so I'll just kind of give you a description. I think, I think the sword would realize after a while that that you're not like acknowledging it, and it would it would say to you. Do you not understand? Not all of it. Would you like me to read it to you? Yes, please. Take me to the east wall. Uh, before, I guess, we explore the room, if I can retcon a little bit, sure. um, I would go up to Nona and motion towards Lee and say, does she really need to remain bound? Oh, of course not. Uh, I look at Lee, I apologize. Um. Lee just like shakes her head and refutes your apology <laughs> in her body language. She takes out two keys and unlocks one. And swallows one of them. <laughs> and then the other. <laughs> it's a two key handcuff. It's one key per cup. <laughs> so I didn't really do that. Um, but she unlocks both of them and puts them back. Lee like nods at you, but can't meet your eyes when she does it. And she just looks really like not happy, I guess. All right. Yeah, so after that, then we can go back to the sword stuff. I just... Cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the mural on the east wall, as I said, depicts deities banding together to battle the nameless god. The text reads in Elvish, the gods align to cast out the nameless one. However, the place where the nameless god should appear in the mural has been chiseled away with a single repeating phrase in old Elvish that reads... Awaken my lord. Oh, in Elvish. The west wall has a mural which depicts two figures battling a horde of monsters rising from the depths below. Both figures have been defaced and various phrases are carved into the wall in Old Elvish. A single intentional caption is delicately carved above in Old Elvish, reading... This is the resting place of Kel Paris and Loriac, the twin shields of Mithril, enemies of darkness, the eternal protectors. May they be blessed with the strength of the gods during their eternal vigil. The graffiti on top of it reads, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. When does eternity cease? All shall join us in damnation. Does the graffiti look like it's been placed very recently? No. Okay. The north wall contains a wooden door, greatly aged and graying. Next to the door, a crudely painted mural depicts small humanoids being led by larger warped figures with distorted proportions. The figures carry knives, which they use to create a cascade of blood that drips into a massive black void beneath them. Can you guys hear my dog drinking water? It's super loud. Yes. <laughs> I kind of wondered what that noise was. That's the sound it's of the, the blood. Fountain. It's the fountain on the side. <laughs> it was a little Lovecraftian. <laughs> the figures carry knives, which they use to create a cascade of blood that drips into a massive black void beneath them. The three colors present in the mural are black, white, and red. Um, make a dc 15 wisdom save or wisdom check perception check for the sword please who just who? wait 
Oh, uh, if if it's for me, it's nineteen. If it's just the roll, it's fourteen. For the sword, yeah. So I believe uh, you still have the stats, Nancy. I believe the sword has a wisdom of fifteen, so that's a plus two. Okay, so sixteen. Okay. Unless it's proficient, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the sword will notice that one of the warped figures is taking a knife to its own hand, and it and it's describing this to you. The blood flows from his hand into a door and down to the void below. The door has warped and twisted beyond its frame. Now, this is the door out of this room. The door has warped and twisted beyond its frame, and the handle also does not appear like it will turn. You don't see any keyholes. And the infernal that is written or scratched into the door, excuse me, there's writing an infernal in the door, which reads, um, he hungers for you, who shall never be whole, do you seek him? You yeah. never be. He's re repeating this to us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, Wid is repeating it out loud, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as long as I don't think it's a spell or anything. <laughs> It seems like it's just text. Um, the... Yeah, it. Well, he's he's translating it into common for you. So the kids are through the door, right? And the way to get through the door is blood. We haven't tried breaking it down yet. So he tries smashing against it. Wait, you said? Can you repeat those words one more, once more, Z? I missed something in the middle. He hungers for you, who shall never be whole. Do you seek oh. him? The figures, uh, you said they're the larger ones that are, I guess, slashing the smaller ones. They're disfigured in some way. Can I tell what race they are or were originally? Larger warped figures with distorted proportions. Okay. Yeah. Um, but vaguely humanoid? Mm, not really. Okay. The Sudi slammed her shoulder against the door. Did the old wood do anything? Make a strength check, strength athletics check. Okay. Seventeen. So Sudi kind of gets a little bit of a running start and slams her shoulder into this door, attempting to break through it. The door doesn't even budge, not even remotely. In fact, the door is so warped and twisted that it doesn't look like it actually fits in this door jam. It's like so swollen and kind of like misshapen. It looks like it never intended to be here, but rather it was smaller before and has since grown and changed. You have strong wood up here, Sudi says. We have strong magic up here. Is that all of the text, Z? Or is there, have we done that the south is, wall? That is all of the text. The south wall is the opening you came in. Okay, so there's nothing like on the back wall. Right. So magic will open this. Blood and life will open this, is my Not understanding. Another life. I fear that's the only currency here. If no one was stopping me at the time and did not notice because I'm doing this quietly, not trying to hide it, just doing it quietly and discreetly, I guess. I feel like that's not some more. Um, I would <laughs> like be, I would cut my finger a little bit with my dagger and kind of be standing towards the door to see what happens with my dagger. Because I also have daggers. Okay. So <laughs> the... Lee cuts her finger and is standing next to the door. You don't notice anything. Does Quinn smell it? I was going <laughs> to ask. Does, does, the blood, does the blood... We have an infinite source of blood from, from Quinn's dagger. Just saying. Um, is there blood on your dagger right now? 
I mean, there's a little bit. You want to you want to you want to put your dagger up to the door and see if anything happens. Sure. Do we want to investigate the rest of the room first? I don't really want to. Well, we will be high on perception. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a lever. Are the mannequins set up the way you described them? You it sounded. It looked like it sounded like that they were set up like, like they were in some sort of teaching environment where there was two students at a desk and one on the other side of the room. Did it look like a student teacher thing? It looks more like. It looks more like this is a, a living space as opposed to a teaching space. Okay. But the it looks like the mannequins were probably storage for maybe armor, right? So if you've ever seen an armor stand, you've Just seen my armor, armor stands, right? I have seen your armor stands. Is there dust or footprints or anything um, that could tell when maybe this space was last occupied? Yeah, make a perception check. Does the um, painting of the children on the wall, does that look new or is it peeling? Um, to be clear, they're not children. Small they, figures. They're just smaller figures, yeah. Um, oh. No, they're very, very old. Okay. Would Quinn's nat 20 from her original perception check count? Yeah, I think so. So as you're looking around, um, particularly at the floor, you do notice that the floor of the room is covered in notches, tallies, in fact, adding to five. They are very small and they cover the entire surface of the floor. So you know how you make little, little notches and then do the cross slash mm -hmm. for the five, yeah. Okay. There, are, yeah. there are thousands and thousands of these covering the entire floor, and they look like they've been manually scratched in. Ugh. That's terrifying. This feels really sad, friends. Look at the floor. I ask the sword what it can tell me about this room. I have not been in this place. It appears to the depict... Floor is cut up. It appears to depict a battle between the gods and the nameless god. Do you know the purpose of this room? I do not. Do you know the purpose of the door? The purpose of the door is to seal in the nameless god. Do you know where the children are? I do not. Thank you. You are welcome. I love the sword. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm wondering whether it's going to kill someone as soon as we go through that door. But so he's not wondering that. Was the desk in, in the room? Um completely bare or did it have drawers or anything like that it does have drawers would you like to check oh good call uh do you want me to roll for anything or just go check it out or yes i would like you to make an investigation check i'm gonna feed my cat real quick and then i'll be back mm -hmm. animal handling <laughs> i rolled a three i'm not on game anymore <laughs> oh no so with, with a three, um, you kind of rifle through the, the desks and you, you open the drawers and um, it doesn't look like there is really much in here that seems to have survived the ages. It's just papers and... Um, not even papers. Papers wouldn't have lasted very long. Um, there would be like maybe some decayed parchment which is made out of 
um, animal hide. As opposed to wood pulp. I had a chapter on parchment. I would look at anything that I think might have writing on it. If that means anything with my three. <laughs> um. Or Lee would. Yeah, I think you would find some parchment that does have um, some writing on it. Um, it is, however, written in ancient Elvish. Okay, whatever I find that looks interesting, I would just place on top of the desk, which I assume was clear before. Sure, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lee, do you check out both desks or just one of them? Um... Wait, there were two desks or two chairs? Two desks, one chair. Oh. And the chair's broken. <laughs> I saw that, I guess. Um, yes, I check out the second desk. Yeah, two two wooden desks. Yeah. Okay, uh, make an intelligence investigation check. Uh, two wooden desks. Sorry, just roll investigation. Yep, same, same roll, just different desk. Uh, they roll different desk. 18 this time. <laughs> okay, 18. Hey. So this one, as you're looking through, you're going a little bit more, more thorough. And as you pull out one of the drawers, you you get the sense that the the as you pull it out, it doesn't pull out as far as it should. And so you like kind of mess with it a little bit and you find a secret compartment in the back of the drawer. Inside that secret compartment, you find a small pewter statue of what looks like an elven soldier. And if you would like, you can make a history check. Okay. My curiosity <laughs> is peaked, and I am watching what she's doing. Three. Me too. Three. You have no idea what this soldier means. I, I look at it and look towards the group and say, uh, or Lee says, uh, I found this in the back of the drawer, this toy. <laughs> Just like pulled it out to you guys. Can we roll to recognize? Yep, yep absolutely. What is, what is that? An intelligence oh, A 20. history? It's Did a you history. Say it was history? Yep. History. 23 total. Holy nice. moly. Dang. How do I roll a disadvantage? That's a 16 plus. I think it, it makes sense that Mavly would 19. know this. I, so. I thought maybe. <laughs> so Mavly, immediately when you see this soldier, you've you've definitely heard about these. So what these um, little pewter soldiers are is... Um, these sorts of pewter statues were given to the parents of elven soldiers when they enlisted in the military. Um, yeah. So it's very likely that the inhabitants of this room probably had a child, or at least one of them did, who enlisted in the elven military. So it looks like this is probably a keepsake that they hid in the back of their drawer. Can, can we look in the other one to see if there's a another hidden compartment in the same place? Sure. Uh, you go back to the other desk, and there is, in fact, not another hidden compartment. It's worth a shot. Yeah. You do, you would, however, see the papers on the top of the desk. Um, that Lee had pulled out and sat there. Right. Um, I can't read ancient Elvish, but I know a sword who can. <laughs> you want to try it? Or no. Do you want me to read it? <laughs> I think you're doing it. You're doing just fine doing it yourself. At some point, this needs to go back to Lee. I say that to everyone. Um, and then I'll, I'll read it. I'll say sword. What does this say? Um, the sword would 
have you like move the papers around so that it can read them. And it essentially says that um, these documents are um, concerning the residents of this room, uh, the twin shields who lived here. And some of these are bits of like um, journal entries or just notes that were written. And uh, just to summarize it, it kind of alludes to the fact that the two eventually became to hate one another over the millennia and millennia of being together uh, guarding this place. They ended up hating one another. And these are the two elven warriors that sealed this? Correct. That, that were trapped behind to defend the gates from the inside. Okay. For I've... eternity. Yeah, I relay that. Does it say... Does it say that either one of them, like, left or It does died? not. It does not. Is there an end? Is there, like, a last entry? No. It's an incomplete... Um, in, in incomplete collection. Okay. Um, Quinn, building off your um, really, really good role on perception of the room in general, um, you do see in the east wall um, a hole, or it looks like the wall is damaged, and there's a crack that has a gap in it large enough that you can see that there is something behind it. Sudi saw this too, right? Because she got a 20? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Sudi heads toward the crack. Do they see that over there? Yeah, and I'll follow her. Okay. That's too small for Quinn to fit in, right? With a little Maybe. bit of effort. <laughs> Quinn's um, pretty small. It, it looks like you could further damage the wall to make the opening larger. Yeah. Do I, do we see anything in the broken part of the wall? Uh, you do not, no. Judy tries to tear it with her hands. Okay, um, make your athletics check. Does, I'm not super familiar with. I got a nat one. <laughs> Um, that mm -hmm. one, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Judy goes up to the wall and starts pushing on it, and it, it doesn't seem to be budging. But she also seems to be, um, like she doesn't have good footing, she keeps slipping. She basically looks stupid, yeah. It looks pretty silly. I'm coming to investigate what you're doing and kind of uh, looking at it. Can I try throw in some of my ball bearings? It's, it's not like that big of a hole. It's it's a big enough hole that you can see that there is something beyond it, but it's not like, you know, you couldn't like put a hand through it or anything like that. And I, I don't think you could really effectively throw anything through it, but you could try. I assumed that she could get a few fingers through. I would say you could probably get like one or two fingers into the hole. Yeah. And this is a stone wall, right? It is a stone wall, but it's badly damaged. We're not going to hit the wall. Not going to light the things in the wall. What thing? <laughs> um, Z, this, can yeah. I use my blind sight to find out what's behind the wall? That's not how blind sight works, but I, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> quite you wouldn't sure light the works. tapestries, would you? Sudi asks Navli. Lee pulls out her great club and kind of beckons and implies you guys should move aside, and I'm gonna try and hit it. Lee's gonna try and hit it at me. Sudi moves. Uh, I'm gonna take a snack. Do you want me to actually roll for, for damage or anything, or? So, sorry, I couldn't hear that. What? 
uh, I'm trying to smack it with my um, great club. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you hit it with your great club. Um, I don't think this requires a roll. I think it causes that section of the wall to cave in into the whatever's behind it. Um, and it it does reveal a hole. Like a passageway that is large oh. enough for maybe somebody to crawl through. A human to crawl through? Okay. Uh, Maya, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, it has been a uh, week and I'm starting to get a little trained to hang it on there. Okay, we haven't heard from you a while. I just wanted to check on you real quick. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Is it big enough for a human? Uh, it would be a tight fit for a human, but it could theoretically fit, yes. At uh, least looking into it with her torch. Okay. It looks like there is a small chamber. Um, if if y'all needed a small individual to go in and check something out, Edie would volunteer. Volunteer away? Y'all want me to take a look at this? Um, well, with dark vision, is there any way to tell how long the tunnel goes on for? It, you can see the back. So it, it looks like there's just a small chamber that is about a six foot circular room. Um, you can see um, two objects in the room that are sitting on little stands. And they look like shields. They look like shields. Duty taps Lee and motions for her to move aside and says, the little ones can go first. I just, Lee just does that. And looks to see if, if the, that's true for everyone. Z, do those shields look like anything we've seen elsewhere in the room or before um they i would say they loosely resemble some of the depictions that you've seen of the twin shields of loriac in in all of the depictions of them um maintaining their vigil they're always carrying uh these shields that oh, look shields. very much like these two shields Mavly kind of looks in and looks out she looks at nona then she looks at quinn I think those are like the shields, like the, like those, like. Like yeah. the sister? No, no, very different. <laughs> like actual historical millennial old artifact of awesomeness. Maybe neat, super neat. <laughs> Don't lick it. <laughs> you don't even know how they smell. You were going you off of smell before. before? <laughs> Let's not get into that. Um, in the room, uh, no, in the room, tiny humans. Get in, go. Okay, going, going. Go. All right, Quinn <laughs> climbs through the hole. The dwarf just called the gnome a tiny human. <laughs> yeah, you know, creature, tiny creature, go, tiny creature, go. Yeah, in, in the room. And it closes room, behind her. We're never seeing her again. <laughs> in the room, um, there there is nothing in there except for two um, side by side angular stands, each one holding um, a pristine mithril shield. Oh. Did um, Edie come with me? Yeah. Yeah, Edie definitely would have uh, gone through. Okay. Can I check for traps? I don't want to touch anything That's just a good yet. Idea. You can. Yep. Make a perception check. Perception. Can I assist that at all? Absolutely. To give her any sort of bonus. Absolutely. Quinn, do it with advantage. Not all heroes wear capes. 
but Edie might. <laughs> uh, no, it rolled those together, but I got a 10. I'm sorry with advantage. It was just a 10. Oh, no. It looks safe. It sure does. <laughs> oh. Um, what do you guys think? Should we touch these shields? I don't know. Is there another hole behind them? There is not. Well, that's what Sudi was answering. Edie's just going to call out, hello, uh, twin shields, anyone here? Silence. Uh, I don't feel I really want to speak on this, Lisa's. We're coming in peace. Uh, can I cast um, Divine Sense? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, describe to me how um, you use your divine sense and what exactly it does. Um, so, and she's looking into the hole mm -hmm. when she's doing it. So she's- Yeah, your divine sense is a, an area. Yeah, but yeah. it does, um, it, it, as long as it's not behind total cover. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I clarified, but, um, she, she kind of focuses her energy. There's like, like glowing wispiness around her fingertips as she kind of, um, does like, I, I'm making this up, but like the sign of Illmater. Yeah. It, it's a hands. half crescent moon. Okay, so like maybe like a. Um, cool. So as as Ellie kind of open up opens up her celestial senses, um, as you as you kind of reach out your consciousness to contact, um, your God, you do notice at this point that that connection doesn't Just... quite feel as strong as it normally would. In fact, it feels almost substantially Seven. diminished. You still have the power at this point, mm -hmm. but it definitely feels like something here is affecting- Suppressing it. Affecting the magic, yeah. Um, and so you, you use your divine sense. And what is the range on divine sense? Remind me. 60 feet. 60 feet, great. Um, as you open up your consciousness, you absolutely get some pings on your divine radar. Um, you sense the silent one is in the room with you. Oh, great. Um, you detect him in the corner where the mannequin is, the single mannequin. All right. Um, as we far totally as- We should have figured that out. As far as <laughs> other things, you don't detect any other celestials, aberrations, undead. Yep, just that one. All right. Actually, Nothing. no, sorry. You do you do detect some undead beyond the door. Okay. Um, you still in. That's good. Nothing from the. Um the 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 shields nothing from the shields, from the shields. okay cool uh, actually let me because it, it only detects beings right mm -hmm. uh, and and things affected by the hallow spell yeah okay so um, that's not that wouldn't right apply. but that was Yeah, have yep, so no that's, location. That's what uh, you detect. Yep. All right. Um, should I roll like deception as I draw my, my? I think, yeah, I think you should. 
Okay. And and I will make a perception check here to see All if right. it Well, just to let you know, he has no eyes, so. <laughs> uh, he should be really bad at it. Okay. <laughs> oh, not bad. Um, I'm just, thank you, Dice. Um, so this is an <laughs> 18, what is this? Can I, can it be, yeah, so plus two, so that's a dirty 20. Okay, great. Um, as I'm like, so, so I'm gonna like kind of pretend to feel out the room, kind of like maybe mime dowsing with my hammer. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, dowsing up the ceiling and then <laughs> whack them all. Oh, you're going to strike. Okay. Great. I'm striking the mannequin. Surprise attack. All right. As you strike the mannequin, make an can attack it, roll, please. Can it be critical? <laughs> it is a surprise. So does that mean advantage or critical hit? Or auto critical? Advantage. Yeah. Advantage. All right. You're not a rogue. <laughs> I could be if I really tried the. <laughs> Try really, really hard. Are we in a multi-classing yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I rolled a 20. Yeah. So. All right. Critical hit. Yeah. Roll percentile, please. All right. That's not my percentile dice. This was such a fortuitous turn of luck. <laughs> I was just <laughs> waiting to murder one of you. <laughs> <laughs> all right that is a one that is a one i think it's a zero zero no. and a zero one it's a zero zero and a one yeah so that's a one so still technically a critical but nothing additional happens okay so um, yeah the the only thing extra that happens is maybe you bruised his ego <laughs> i hope i really made him think about what he did yeah so go ahead and roll your damage while well, she okay. rolls damage like mavly's gonna look at sudi and go we don't normally strike at inanimate objects <laughs> <laughs> um okay so um Wait, so does that mean I don't get the normal double damage? Or not double damage? No, we damage. just do normal crits here. So, okay. Yeah. Or, or what, what's the normal crit? Just remember. Double dice. Double dice. Got it. All right. Can I say it was with two hands? Because I was no, dowsing? No, because... Uh... All right. Yeah, sure. I've definitely doused. Oh, you got to give me. To you. I, I feel like you've earned some vengeance here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So that's a D10. So two D10s. And then I'm going to bonus action. What, what's under the damage? My... What's the damage? Uh, the damage is... Six and six. So that's twelve okay, bludgeoning. So twelve plus plus um two. plus two. Okay, so fourteen, and then you're gonna smite as well. I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna okay. thunderous smite. Do you have to use thunderous smite before you hit? It's a bonus action. The first time you hit with the melee weapon attack during this spells. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, you have to use that first. But You're you right. can use a regular divine smite. I will do that. Yeah. My bad. Okay. Um, so that is an extra 2d6. So grabbing that. Look, I know I can't kill this bastard, but <laughs> yeah, that is a beefy hit though um that is a that is 10 more damage so 24 points of damage of radiant 
Um, and I get an extra 1d8 against undead or fiends. He's not undead or a fiend. All right. All right. So, um, <laughs> so Nona is kind of walking around the room. It looks like she's using her hammer as a dowsing rod. And then suddenly she just smacks at the mannequin that has been sitting un, um, unobtrusively, the unaccusingly, there you go, in the corner of the room. And she just clocks it. And instead of shattering, like you might expect a, a clothing or an armor mannequin to do, instead it lets out a shriek and you see its body morph and it stands up to its full height. And what you see before you is the silent one with its emaciated figure and it turns to look at you as its mouth is peeled open and you see its pearly fangs and three empty sockets with glowing beads inside Fuck you. and as it reels from the attack it immediately launches itself into the darkness of the passageway that you um came from and if you wish, you can make an opportunity attack. I'd love to. Okay. That is a 14 plus four. So that's 18 to hit. Awesome. So this next hit smacks him in the back. And I'm going to assume that this is also an ass ton of damage. Probably. Can you smite more than once in a turn? I think you can. I can, but it does take a spell slot. Oh, it's a reaction to smite, so you can't. Oh, okay. Would she be able to take an opportunity attack? That's what this is. Oh, oh, that's a good point. You're right, you're right. I'm not trying to be an ass. No, you're doing... Yeah. Well, I, I mean, know. since it was a surprise I... round, is this a new round? Ooh. Actually, it is. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah you would okay. you would still get the opportunity attack but i wouldn't be able to smite I, i'm actually not sure if smite uses your reaction or not yeah so it doesn't it doesn't yeah there you go so you from my my uh, dungeon master helper over here in the room uh, is telling me that you I can smite as many times as you want uh, so if you want, you can smite again. But it does still take a spell slot, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep my cure wounds. Let, let's be honest. Paladins don't have spell slots. They have smite slots. They have slots. smite slots. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's a d6. I'm, I'm dumb. All right. There we go. All right, that's nine points of bludgeoning. Oh, here. man. For a, for a grand total of... 33 it, points of damage. Did it look like I did anything to it? Nope. Well, I uh, mean, yes. Yes. You, you connected <laughs> extremely solidly. And it definitely felt it. Did it look like you grievously injured him? No. No. Um, he did, however, run off into the darkness. And very quickly, you lose sight of him. Yeah. And Sudi chase him. Oh, absolutely. You can please, please don't. Please, <laughs> please don't chase him. him. Please don't chase him. <laughs> she only chases him to the edge of the room. If she can't see him past that, she stops. Yeah, he, he is moving very quickly. Um, and you would lose sight of him at about the point where you got to the edge of the room. Because I don't, yeah, you're human. You don't have dark vision. So your your vision is limited by the light created by the torch which you are not carrying so yeah you would lose sight of him very quickly yeah all right so he's that stuck was... in the room right he's somewhere no he's not stuck in the room he ran out of the room he's he stuck ran out in of the room. Mm -hmm. he's stuck in he's behind stuck in, the door in... he's stuck behind the gate which is fantastic news I mean, technically, Nona! we could corner him. That's but... wonderful. I was so stressed that he was actually out there while we were in here. <laughs> but he was in here while we were yeah, in but here. But he's in here while we're in here. Holy crap, he's in here and we're in here. <laughs> <laughs> we get to without the thing. It's great. 
Okay. Um, so uh, for for the sake of brevity, um, do you want to collect the shields and bring them? I think that would be a good idea. Yes. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end us here. So I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. Um, but I'm going to put the shields in Discord, and then you guys can do with them what you will. Well, I figured Quinn would get a shield and Edie would get a shield. Do you guys do shields? 